right, everybody, good morning and welcome to Good Morning Xbox. I am your host, Axel1324. And I'm Cool Cat Terry. That's right, and I am on the wrong side of the screen. Let me fix this. Here we go. Yay, much better. <laughs> uh, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. As you guys know, we didn't have an episode last week due to Easter. Hopefully everybody's Easter went really well. Um, you know, I seem to got have gotten sick from Easter, so <laughs> hanging around big crowds is still not a great idea. So, um, so I am uh, going to be in and out of vo- from a volume perspective, as sometimes I will just be coughing. You'll see it. Um, I still have a lingering cough, but uh, if you can hear me in comparison to Friday night, I sound a lot better, though still not a hundred percent. I'm like ninety five percent there, so I am. I'm feeling a lot better. Uh, but you know, it's been uh, it's been two weeks, Terry. What you been playing? Uh, I've still been on getting back into Snow Runner, and I've been playing a little bit of Dragon's Dogma too. So it's been it's been good. I've been enjoying it. Oh, Dragon's Dogma two, nice. Dragon's nice. Dogma two. Is it as good as everybody says it is? It's it's good. I mean, it's I, I can tell the polish from the first game. The first game was janky, but it was still a lot of fun. But it was janky. So when people were complaining about the second one, I'm like, have you not played the first one? Come on now. <laughs> like, right? <laughs> like, come on now. So, yeah, no. I, I They did a much better job with the second one. Nice. Hey, has a, has a Expeditions come out? You know, a... Uh... It, yes, it is out, but they don't have co-op yet. So, I already knew. They announced that back when they, you know, when the game was coming out that they weren't going to have co-op for a couple months. So, I already knew going in that I wasn't even going to touch that game until co-op was in it. <laughs> so... But it is out. I'm just waiting on that co-op. Wait, wait, wait. Is it on uh is it on uh, Game Pass? I don't think so. Snow Runner's on Game Pass, but I don't think they put Expedition on there. Yeah, there's Snow Runner. Mud Runner's not on there. Ah, weird. I was playing Mud Runner to, like last year, so I'm guessing they're just cycling them out. Yeah, but uh yeah, that game is uh it's something. <laughs> it's something. Um, uh, you definitely do not play the Snow Runner, Mud Runner games unless you got time to do Time and, and you got to have friends because you'll get so frustrated trying to do things by yourself. Oh, like I got, I, I was playing by myself. I got stuck. So I moved to a different truck to unstick my truck with the load. Yes. It, That's it why, it, thing, and it takes forever. It does. That's why friends are, my friends are great. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, even though I got sick, I didn't play any games. But the week before, I've been playing, of course, Unicorn Overlord, which is fantastic, guys. If you are a tactical RPG, if you remember how happy you got when you played games like Shining Force on the Sega on the Sega systems, uh, some of the uh, better um, what are, what are they called on the Nintendo Fire Emblem games? Uh, like uh, the 3DS Fire Emblems. Those were mm, chef's kiss. Uh, or like if you played Final Fantasy Tactics, like just how happy you were when you played those games and how deep their tactical uh, prowess was. Unicorn Overlord is it. Like I did one level the other day. It took me one hour to do one level because the, the combat area was so large. I ended up commanding something like 20 units so so cool i was just like yeah <laughs> and then it's like oh we're gonna fight you and i'm like no you're gonna kill me run away run away <laughs> <laughs> but this guy he's gonna kill you because <laughs> you know you get you get matchups it's really fun really fun unicorn overlord so be sure to check that game out uh of course i've been playing on my quest 3 that i got i've been playing asgard's wrath uh fantastic on the quest three guys fantastic game it's got really good uh combat system um if you prefer melee it has a melee system in there if you don't prefer melee you, you guess what you can throw your weapons and summon them back a la god of war there's an axe you throw oh goodness and then you can it has upgrade trees and you can upgrade your combat your melee combat or you can upgrade your throwing combat pretty cool pretty cool so yeah, be sure to check it out. And now that I'm feeling better, I might get I I'm gonna get back into gaming a lot better. But all I wanted to do when I was feeling sick was not concentrate, just be sick. So I was <laughs> watching a lot of TV, which I normally don't do. I watch like two TV series. 
well, you know, that that sounds terrible because, you know, normally TV series are like 20 episodes long or, or whatever. Not really anymore. Yeah, not anymore. Now they're like eight episodes. So when <laughs> yeah. I say I watch two, I watch like, I was, I was watched, I finished one, which was the Lower Decks, Star Trek Lower Decks. Okay. And of course, I'm going to be watching the last of my favorite one, uh, Star Trek uh, Discovery, which is so sad. It's close. It's so sad. <laughs> you guys, you guys don't know what good Star Trek is. <laughs> I watched so, yeah. like the first episode of the last season and I'm like, okay, they're, they're trying to be a little bit like Star Wars. So I'm like, Cal calm your jets now, you guys are Star Trek. <laughs> I'm like, calm down. <laughs> right. Yeah, because so they got like the uh, like the desert bikes, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like what Star Wars does. I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> they had to put that in there. Oh man, I, I'm a huge fan of Discovery. I'm so sad that I love all those characters, every single last one. Yeah, nothing but good characters on that show. But let's check in with the iconic chat. Up first, we got Fastback. Shout out to Fastback. Thank you so much for joining us, Fastback. You are the real MVP. Reach out to me, buddy. We can put you in on one of the episodes of Good Morning Xbox one day. And, uh, you know, here, here's some of your fast opinions. We got, of course, Double G Graphic God joining us. Shout out to him. You are the real MVP, Graphic God. He says, good morning, Rim. Good morning, Graphic God. We got Doggy Dog 420, my brother. He can tell you how much better I sound. Trust me, he was there. <laughs> he was there uh, on Friday. Shout out to you, Doggy. Thank you so much for joining us. You're the real MVP. You're Wicked Hot joins us. He says, hey, 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 good morning, everyone. I'm still dead from WrestleMania last night. Hey, man, put him up. Acknowledge him. It's going to be bloodline rules to tonight. Bloodline rules. So, yeah, uh, shout out to you, You're Wicked Hot. Thank you so much for joining us. You're the real MVP. Terry's just looking at me like, what? What's going on? <laughs> I, I stopped watching wrestling like a few years back because it got ridiculous. <laughs> uh, the Bloodline storyline has been carrying wrestling for two years. You just don't understand how good the Tribal Chief is. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, shout out to Craig Simmons TV. He says, good morning, Xbox. Good morning, Craig Simmons. Thank you so much for joining us. You are the real MVP. Uh, all right. Let's see. Uh, Fastback says he's been playing Diablo Floor, Lego 2K Drive, and Castlevania Collection. Hey, Castlevania. We were just talking about that on Friday, buddy. Uh, good. That's awesome. I'm thinking about buying it myself. Doggy Dog says Unicorn Overlord is $19 on Target Circle. What? What? They got, I got it as a, as, a, as a birthday present, and I didn't spend any money on it. So thank goodness for that. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Doggy Dog has uh, is saying... Been playing Dragon Dog Dragon's Dogma 2, finished Mass Effect 2, so awesome. Still a blade demo is meh, in my opinion. Really? You don't think it's yamtastic? Yams. Yamtastic. Right. Yamtastic. <laughs> uh, by the way, guys, yeah, let us know what you've been playing. Uh, we'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Shout out to Crazy Greek Dude. Thank you so much for joining us. Crazy Greek Dude. He says, yo, yo, yo. What's going on, Crazy Greek Dude? Thank you so much for being here. And yeah. Uh, yes, Axel, you sound way better. Good to hear you, bro. Good to good to hear you, doggy. Uh, let's see. And he says, all the roads are bums. I like Cody. I do. I just don't like him more than the tribal chief. I'm sorry. I, I like Cody. I think Cody is awesome. If Cody, if Cody went against Seth Rollins, I'd be team Cody 100%. 100%. He'd be the best number two in the business. That's right. I said it. I said it. <laughs> Let's see. Doggy says, yams are great. Combat is weak and slow. World is empty. Dang. Um, you know what, Doggy? You just need to make the yams your world. Your, your, whole, your whole life has to around, revolve around the yams in that game, all right? I haven't played it. Um, as I said, I've been sick. I just haven't turned on any of my consoles really lately. And I don't like playing demos anymore. I like just playing. Uh, Chris Simmons says he just beat Spider-Man 2 New Game Plus and WWE 2K23. Awesome. Awesome. All right, guys. So we got a lot of topics to get through. So we are going to just get started as uh, there is a lot to talk about. You, you all ready, Terry? You ready? I'm ready. All right. So up first, guys. So if you guys don't know, um, Microsoft's Kareem, oh, I'm going to butcher, butcher this, I apologize. Kareem Chaudhry is leaving. 
Um, if you don't know who Kareem Chaudhry, he's became part of that meme that eat its monsters for breakfast. He's the one who said it. Um, about the Xbox Series X during the Scarlet reveal trailer, which I have up right here. Uh, and believe it or not, this is the biggest, most clear picture I could find of this man. <laughs> um, and so he has left now if you don't know he was big into the ai so he pioneered a lot of what's go a lot of the ai the upscaling on back compat you know how a lot of back compat games are just running uh he was part of the team that made the emul the emulation he's part of the team that got that running uh it was he's the guy that made the back compat get um higher resolution Frame rate bumps, auto HDR, stuff like that was that was all his him and his team. Um, he also did um, the X Cloud stuff. So if you are an X Cloud gamer, that you gotta thank him. He is part of that AI team. Of course, a lot of the AI that we're now experiencing on the Xbox Series Series consoles and possibly into the future. I mean, uh, there's he literally has a, a, a method called called after him called the Shadri method. Um, he's been with Microsoft for 26 years, I believe. So, you know, it's not like he, he was a bum. He wasn't, he rose through the ranks and became very prominent, um, role. And as a matter of fact, uh, now that he has, he's leaving there, you have to restructure the company because that how, that is how big of a guy he is. So, um, you know, whether you realize it or not, this guy's work has affected you in a lot of ways you know um a lot of the auto upscaling that games do you know the checkerboarding that they do uh the microsoft checkerboarding was made by this was uh, pioneered by this man right here um so he's probably also one of the guys that got um probably now i don't have this is just probably right maybe getting a uh, xbox play anywhere to work and cross saves and all that stuff probably so he, you know, to see him go is is sad. Um, you know, shout out to you. You're awesome. And we wish you luck wherever you go. If you're just retiring, hey, you know what? Enjoy your retirement, buddy. You earned it. And thank you so much for the uh, for the awesome memories. Um, out of all the things he worked on, Terry, which one do you do you think affects you the most? For me, it would easily be cut back compat. Yeah, it's probably gonna be yeah, the the backwards combat stuff. Um, but that's probably because I don't do cloud. At least not yet so so i think yeah the 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 backwards compatible like anything that he had tied in with that is probably the only thing that he's really worked on that i know uh, has uh impacted me because i i do like going back from time to time and playing some of the older games so i love the fact that i have a backlog and yeah there's like a 90 percent chance that my backlog game is playable on my current console Mm -hmm. so so i love that shout out to you man uh you don't you don't know even though i have the all the consoles you don't know how convenient it is to just pop that disc into my regular xbox and have it launch mm -hmm. especially especially for the indies because some of the games that i showcase are from either like the xbox one or the 360 eras from time to time so it's nice <coughs> knowing that even the lesser known indie games are still backwards compatible so yeah, so shout out to, to, oh gosh, I'm just going to say Kareem. Shout out to Kareem. Thank you so much. <laughs> we appreciate everything you've done here for us. Uh, Fastback says, I like Sarah's president of Xbox, and I like what she said about Xbox will continue to support back compat and all Xbox games going forward on Xbox hardware, Xbox not giving up on Xbox consoles or going full third party. Yeah, we're going to talk about that later. Uh, I agree with everything you said, but we're going to go more into it later. Uh, General Spartan, shout out to you. Thank you so much for joining us. You are the real MVP. He says, starting Evil West, then probably moving on to some more DD2. Dragon's Dogma 2. Evil West is so good. You're going to have fun. It's a good game. Yeah. And backwards compatible has been great. And in Game Pass 2. Yeah. Yeah. I love the fact that I can load up like a Xbox Live Arcade game I bought. And it still works. So I really appreciate all that you've done for for me you know not just for the xbox compute community but for me personally so yeah let me load up our next topic these, these are more announcements than they are topics guys as uh as well, there's nothing new to report other than to say hey this was said 
I'm sorry, I'm getting my buttons mixed up here. So uh, next up, in case you guys didn't know, Gear 6, baby, is, is being teased that it will be teased. We, we got teased that Gear 6 will be teased this <laughs> summer. <laughs> it's a lot of teasing. <laughs> it's a lot of teasing. <clears throat> uh, Terry, open it, open it up. Gear 6, are you excited? I know you're a Gears, Gears, Gears gal. I, I am a Gears fan. I'm just going to go with it. A Gears, gears gal? Gear, a Gears gal. A Gears gal. Okay. Yes, I am a fan of Gears. I am looking forward to see what they do. I was. I will admit that 5, I was not the happiest about, but that's only because when they launched that game it was a hot mess for co-op and i just could not have fun with it and it was just a nightmare so my experience for five was ruined but i don't want to fully give <coughs> up on the franchise so hopefully with six the, you know when they if six is coming hopefully they have it a lot more polished for co-op because i want to enjoy the i want to have the same experience playing cooperatively with a friend as the people who are going into the campaign solo, you know, and it just, it, it's like people who played the five solo when it first launched, didn't have issues. But if you played co-op, it was constant game crashes. The, the enemies didn't spawn. <laughs> I had, I had moments where we killed all the enemies and like, we were supposed to progress to the next part of the quest and it wouldn't progress. <laughs> we were just kind what of kind of gears were you playing? I played day one and I didn't yeah, experience anything you have. Co-op was super <laughs> broken. No, I played co-op. That was the, my you? first playthrough was full co-op. Yeah, well, my I had a horrible experience. <laughs> like it was super broken. Um, I think I even ran into a point where I, my friend got down and it wouldn't even let me pick him up. <laughs> I was like, what is this garbage? And then he ended up bleeding out <laughs> because I couldn't pick him up. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so hopefully we don't have those issues. So I am excited to see um, what they do with six. So uh, I don't want them to do the open world thing that they kind of moved into with five. Oh, I hope they do. I don't want that. I really don't want that. I feel like Gears, for the most part, has been more of like a linear story, and they should stick to that. We don't need the big, massive open world sections for Gears. You know, just stick to the action and just keep blasting through. If they do move more open world, I hope it's like this last Gears was more like open hub than it was open world. You know, you had the the uh, ice hub and then you had the uh, the desert hub. And then you had the linear portion, which was um, new. Oh, what was the name of that city? New. Was it New Jacinto? I don't recall. It's been a while since I played it. New Euphoria or something like that. Whatever it was, right? That city. And uh, yeah, so uh, on the X X Cast podcast, Jeff Grubb teased Gear Six will be teased this summer, um, and his tease has been corroborated now by several other trustworthy uh, people, uh, Tom Warren as well, and I believe even Jez Corden has te- has uh, went ahead and said that. And I'm very excited. It's been five years. Since our last Gears game, um, I remember when Gears Five came out, everybody was talking about like, "Oh, you know, Gears needs to take a break. Gears needs to take a break. They need to work on something else other than Gears." I I was very much against it. I was like, "Shut up! It takes five to six years to make a game. You don't know what you what you're talking about. That's a long wait." And now they're like, "Oh man, I'm so glad that Gears is coming finally being around, but it's probably still two years out." And I'm like, you guys said you wanted a break, and now you're saying you want it now? What the hell? Make up your mind. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you are the podcasters. I have never been one to say, oh, I need a break from this franchise. No, screw that. If you give me a, a new entry into the series every two or three years, I'm happy. Happy as a clam. Right? <laughs> it's like, oh, we got other games to, to play. Screw those other games. Gears is more important. <laughs> Gears is <Trust> life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I love playing Gears. I love my Horde mode. I am a Horde mode fanatic on Gears. I I played Horde mode for over a year. Um, I finished the way 50 many times. So yeah, Gear 6, I cannot wait. I think it's going to be an Unreal Engine 5, which is why we've had such a long wait. And, you know, those guys at the Coalition are going to be our pros at Unreal Engine 5. So Gears 6 might be the first Unreal Engine 
uh, five game at 60 frames per second. So we'll see. Do you think it's going to be, and you know, Unreal Engine, Unreal Engine has historically never been a good open world engine. Um, it is just too heavy of an engine. It's not good. The only open worlds that you see in Unreal Engine are cartoony. And Gears is not cartoony. So I don't think it's going to be able to do open world. So we might go back to, to being a corridor shooter the way Terry loves. Yes, keep it that way. <laughs> that, that's Gears, you know? A lot of duck and cover and, and just keep pushing forward. No. One of my favorite parts was like on Gears 3 or something where you had to like run up a hill or not like run up a hill, but, you know, fight up a hill. It, it was I was just like so happy fighting up that hill for some reason. It, it might have been Gears 3 that did that. But yeah, no. Uh, and hopefully, you know, they keep the three player. Uh, I think the uh, addition of Jackpot was awesome because you can get people that aren't that great at Gears, who, who don't aren't that great at taking cover to just get the the awesome robot and keep upgrading him like he's a freaking megazord you know <laughs> and just runs around and clearing everything with his lightning strike so if you had someone that, if you played with someone who wasn't great at gears uh through the campaign just give him the robot it was awesome and yeah that three player co-op was fun for me so uh let's see check with the chat Fastback says, looking forward to Gear 6. Too close to the story, to close the story from 4 and 5. Ooh, who do you think the main protagonist is going to be? Do you think it's going to be Kate again? I feel like with the way that they had the story revolve around her so heavily, there's a good chance it will be Kate. Otherwise, I mean, it's possible it could be JD as well, I guess, but well, well, I don't know. So if you remember, so Gears 4, the main character was JD. Mm-hmm. Gears 5, the main character was, it was Kate, who, by the way, love Kate. I think she's a great character. Um, so I'm thinking that Gears uh, 6 is going to be revolve around Dell. Okay. You know, because, uh, spoiler, 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 uh, JD may not be around for Gears 6. So, I, I mean, I guess I don't really care too much who the story... I don't know. I feel like with the way that they introduced... The Queen and Kate together. I feel like it would be too hard to keep the story focused on someone like Dell with a big plot like that. You know what I mean? Maybe Dell is going to deliver the virus that kills, finally kills the locusts instead of cocoons them. You never know. <laughs> you never know. I'm just saying, you know, it started out like to be between uh, JD and his dad, right? Gears five. Uh huh. Oh, sorry, sorry. Gears four. Four. Yeah. J JD and Marcus. And you thought that would continue, but no, then it switched over to Kate and her mom. So now it's going to be Dell and his passiveness? I don't know. <laughs> We're going to introduce his uncle. <laughs> We're like, Dell and his uncle. I don't, I, I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> they focus on the new generation. Uh, one game, one uh, focus per game, one character focus per game. So maybe. So yeah, guys, we'll, we'll see what, what, what Gears 6 ends up being. I uh, if they do focus Dell, I'm not going to be surprised. But uh, if they keep focus on Kate, I'm I'm still happy. I'm still happy. So let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, but then again, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Dell may not be around. So, <laughs> you know, just saying. Uh, Black Cardi says, "What's up, guys? What's going on, Black Cardi? Thank you so much for joining us. You are the real MVP." Let's see. Hellblade 2, first on Real Engine 5, but at 30 and can see Gear 6 at 60. But is it coming next year or 26? I'm going to guess it's going to come 26 if they haven't announced it yet. It's usually at least a two to three year um, cycle. You know, because if you if you ever look at trailers, the way Xbox has done traditional trailers, they do an announcement trailer, then they do a CGI trailer, and then they do a gameplay trailer, and that's when the game releases. Have you ever noticed that? No, but I don't pay that close attention to trailers. <laughs> no, seriously, that is a, that is how okay. they do it. They do announcement, CGI, gameplay. But now that everything's going going more gameplay trailer, I'm going to guess they're skipping all that. So maybe. Let's see. Whoever you say will be around, but got to be Kate. Well, yeah, maybe. Maybe we'll see how, how they write it. Look, we already know that the for, for 6, it's going to be all about the Carmine saga. <laughs> okay. 
Hey, you know what, man? Carmine is awesome. The bug killer. Yeah. <laughs> he, um, he, I, I'm almost willing to bet that Microsoft got to see who people picked to save. Um, and whoever, you know, was picked more to be saved is going to be alive in the next series. So I'm going to guess that's the route they got, because when you do a choice like that, I'm like, oh, how are you going to do a sequel? Yeah, either either they'll have to just choose or they'll have to do a thing what, like what Bioware has done, where you have to like link your game save. Yeah, so pull, or so it pulls your choices. Yeah, or so or something close to that. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Mr. Kima. Shout out to you. Thank you so much for joining us. You're the, you are the real MVP. This is good Sunday morning, Xbox fans and gamers. And, and guys, I'm going to go ahead and take the, a moment here to be sure to like and subscribe if you're new. Share this show out if you uh, if you can. It lets us get more and more people in here. And also, uh, liking helps us get discovered on the live section of people just scrolling on YouTube a lot. So be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Let's get it going here. Okay, so I don't know if you heard, Terry, but Starfield, the game that everybody crapped on, is the only new game out of the PC, PlayStation, and Xbox to make it into the top 10 monthly active users list of 2023. Uh, So this is average monthly active users, not by month, but overall for the year. And if you notice, Starfield is right here, number eight on the Xbox Monthly Active Users list. Of course, Fortnite rocking, number one. Still the number one game in the world, apparently. (laughs) Um, And of course, Nintendo had four new games on this list. So, but Fortnite also dominating Nintendo, right? So, but if you look at all these games, right? Multiplayer, 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 single player, multiplayer, multiplayer. You go down the PlayStation list, multiplayer, 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 blah, 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 multiplayer. Okay, all the way down. PC, multiplayer, multiplayer, single player, right? The Sims. Multiplayer, 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 right? So... Um, multiplayer is ruling the monthly active users charts, right? And you have um, Starfield being the only, not only the only new game out of all these games. All these games are older than last. Than tw- they came out way before twenty twenty three. Maybe like maybe, maybe Warzone two point might count, you know. But whatever, that's just an update. Um, but. It's also the only new single player game to break this monthly active users list. So shout out to Starfield and all of us who played it for a long time and are still playing it. You guys are awesome. Look what we did, guys. We did it. Even though people like Terry might hate on Starfield. I'm going to hate on Starfield. It was mediocre. (laughs) (laughs) I I say it's worth playing, but it's mediocre. (laughs) Even though people like Terry might hate on it, look at this monthly active users <laughs> month after month after month. We were there fighting the good fight for the game. I wasn't there month after month, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> now I was there month after month. I played that game. You finished that game way before I did, probably because you did yeah. a lot less exploring than I did. Like mm-hmm. I was there was so much of what does this do? What does that do? If I push this here, what happens? You know, like, yeah, I did a lot of that. So, uh, yeah. So me and two of my coworkers and Terry for a month, (laughs) (laughs) we carried Starfield onto this list, guys. We're amazing. So shout out to Starfield. You guys are awesome. You made it to that list. Still say Uh, the ending sucks. (laughs) (laughs) You got to play the new game plus. It's hilarious. All the dialogue changes. You, you can skip a lot because you know a lot. It's it's really funny. Uh, let's see. Um, it's the reason why these companies are looking to multiplayer games to make that continuous money. Yep, it's where it is. Uh, let's see. We got... I love Starfield. Not surprised. A top single-player game. That's right. So this just proves that Starfield was the best 
single player game of last year with the most monthly active users. But notice that it's only the most monthly active users on the Xbox side. Terry, do you believe this was carried by Game Pass? That's definitely possible. I feel like a lot more people played it that weren't going to mm -hmm. uh, because of Game Pass. So I definitely would concede that that was a major factor. For sure. I'm just kind of surprised that Hogwarts <laughs> only showed up for Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, the number one selling game of the year only showed up for Nintendo at number nine. That, I find that to be extra, extra strange. <laughs> So now you know uh, the disparity for Hogwarts. Apparently, it's selling most copies on Nintendo Switch. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, well, what did I ask you? Oh, yeah, Game Pass. Yeah, I didn't play Starfield on Game Pass. I bought the Collector's Edition uh, with the watch and everything. So I am... Uh, not a Game Pass Starfield guy, but if I didn't get a hold of the Collector's Edition, it was going to be Game Game Pass. I not buy Xbox games at the Collector's Editions only. Because <laughs> I'm a Game Pass subscriber, so. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, played, I definitely used Game Pass when I played it. Let's. Yeah, no. The, oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. Hold on. I clicked the wrong button. It has, like, five links on the same in here uh okay but uh let's get into the indie talk before we get into terry's indie spotlight that's gonna do it for the announcements so we got another indie spotlight of march 2024 this came out at the end of the month as it always does select indie select <laughs> and yeah indie select so we are gonna start talking about these games all right so we got Baltaro? Is that how you say it? I don't think so. Baltaro. Yeah, I don't. Well, I'm assuming the A is supposed to be an A there. Balatro? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Balatro, you're right. Ha! I actually cannot read English. Sorry, guys. I've been <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't think so. <laughs> Terry, while I pull up the, the preview video, can you read this? Sure. It's just video poker, right? You'd be given, you'd be forgiven for thinking that by just glancing at it, but you'd be very wrong. It takes the rather simplistic poker framework and reinvents it as a deep, engaging, <coughs> and utterly addictive roguelike. You start with a basic deck and play hands to beat a target number of chips for each round. But where it gets fun is unlocking bonus and special cards that make your choices much more complex and interesting. Leveling up three of a kind and playing it with a spade bonus can make it more valuable than even a royal flush. What? <laughs> and you can unlock new jokers and other cards after each run to create new options for the next run. And suddenly it's 3 a.m. and you're still playing. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's check out Balatro now. From what I understand, this is a very, like, um, high selling game. I'm going to turn the volume on for this, guys, because I'm very interested on this. I've never heard of it. If so you like poker, pay attention. <laughs> let's, let's watch this poker trailer. Winning in Balatro is simple. All we have to do is play a flawless four of a kind and. Wait, what? It's fine, because with Here. this mad joker, we can go mad with power and increase our multiplier by a gargantuan plus 20 to absolutely smash. <laughs> really? Right. Time to bring out the big guns. <laughs> with these planet cards to permanently increase our level and tarot cards to power them up. Tarot taking cards? Taking four of a kind to wild, soaring new heights that will surely... Okay. Okay. What? It's time to break things. We enlist the help of the Scholar to maximize our aces, followed by the Blueprint to duplicate that boost. Then grab a cheeky voucher to lower shop prices, and finally use our remaining cash to grant us a mythical Spectral Pack, allowing us the godly power to transform all our cards into aces and unlock a truly forbidden hand. Five of a kind. This is a game of hacks. <laughs> <sighs> like I said, winning in Balatro is simple. 
Ah, okay. Well, there, there you go. <laughs> Apparently, getting cards is not enough. You gotta enchant them. <laughs> you gotta get your. You gotta get some packs. All that stuff. And hey, shout out to Dreadful for joining us. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning. Good Sorry, morning. How, how was how was uh, how was how was your sleep? I know you stayed up at late editing. Yeah, it's it's it was a rough sleep. Short. <laughs> All right. Well, we just finished watching the trailer to Balatro. We're on to our indie select section. Uh, so sorry if you missed it. Uh, dreadful, but we're glad you're here. <coughs> uh, so Terry, Balatro, are you going to try it? I mean, I like poker, but I don't know. They lost me when they said you have to put tarot cards in your poker game. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> they lost you at tarot. They, they, they lost uh, me at tarot. Hold on. So planet cards. Planet cards. <laughs> I didn't like that. Easy. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> it's a poker <laughs> all right um it's not it's still not enough for me i'm sorry uh if it comes to game pass i'll try it but it's definitely not enough for me uh guys in the chat let us know if you if Balatro is for you if you're gonna try it buy it and check it out uh dreadful i don't know if you saw the trailer what did what did you think for what you saw i didn't see anything but from what i'm hearing it's not for me all right it's not, not for me all right, up next is the two Raider 1, 2, and 3 remaster starring Laura Croft, my original gaming crush. Laura Croft, no, I would say Shun Lee probably is my original gaming crush. The lady that replaced Shun Lee, Laura Croft. <laughs> uh, Terry, while I get this section ready, can you read, please? Yes. So the first Tomb Raider came out in 1996 and took the gaming world by storm. It's an absolute classic from start to finish. This remaster of the first three games is a love letter to the origins of the series, featuring all three original adventures, including the expansions and secret levels, improved graphics, and the choice to play with classic or modern controls. The classic tank controls might seem a bit alarming and strange to anybody under 35, <laughs> but playing that way certainly took us back to our youth and thrill of tomb raiding with Lara. As with many games from the 90s, they're not considered particularly easy by modern standards, but finding your way through platforming-based puzzles and figuring out the best solutions is incredibly rewarding. As a remaster compilation of games that were undeniably AAA back in the day count as indie? Great question. Who knows? <laughs> For sure. But we decided that it counts since the developer behind the remaster, Asper, generally fits the bill. But instead of getting bogged down in that thought experiment, go play the games. You can thank me later. <laughs> uh, you're muted, Axel. Going back to Balatro real quick, as some of the chat has uh, come in with some. Uh, that's the game Tony Grasso was talking about on Iconic Video Games Podcast when he was on with Prey. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Uh, Graphic God goes poker. Uh, yeah, poker. And... Shout out to the game complainers. Thank you so much for joining us. You are the real MVP. Be sure to check them out this Wednesday as I will be on the show as well. Uh, if you can, game complainers, put on a, on what time you're on Eastern time, what day and time, so I can put it on there. Uh, we're barely newer. Yeah. Uh, Fastback says, I would play that. He would play Balatro. Okay, good, good, good. And Donkey says, I fold. Yeah, yeah, I would too. <laughs> Uh, and good morning, y'all. Shout out to RWK88. Thank you so much for joining us. You are the real MVP. All right. So uh, Tomb Raider remastered. I'm going to lower this volume a bit, guys. How's that volume? Is that good? Bad? Too low? It's all right. That's good. All right. <clears throat> so um, I played the first two. Uh, the first one on my um, on my Saturn. And the second one on a PlayStation years later on a PlayStation 2 as it was back compact. And um, so I think these are great games. They were great for what they were. Um, definitely did not hold your hand and threw you straight into the fire right away. You thought you were going to shoot a T-Rex? No, you had to run. Run. <laughs> run for your life. And uh, the fact that it includes all the expansions, especially to the second one, is awesome. So... Um, I think this is a great remastered collection, um, of course, but uh, I already have the first two. The first three, I already played them. I have no reason to play this remaster when I have other games in my backlog. Um, Tomb Raider 1, 2, 3 remastered, 
Are you going to play it? I definitely need to. They're on the backlog. <laughs> I definitely need to. Um, this is something that I'm going to have to buy. It's just I don't have time for it. Uh, about a couple years back, I went and I played through all of the Tomb Raider games, and uh, I ended up doing I ended up doing Tomb Raider Anniversary to count as Tomb Raider One because it's the same game. It was just the it was just mm-hmm. the reboot of it. Yeah. Because the controls in the original game were so horrendous. I couldn't even jump to the first block <laughs> when the game started. I'm like, okay, I'm done. I can't do it. <laughs> I'm too I'm too accustomed to modern day technology and controls. I can't go back to when I was a kid. Like, how did I have patience for that as a kid? I don't even know. Because as an adult, I no longer can do it. <laughs> but uh how did but, I figure uh, this out when I was younger? <laughs> I'm like, I remember playing through like one and two and three as a kid. And I remember raging a lot as a kid, but I was able to get through it. I couldn't even do the first level as an adult. I'm like, oh boy, this is going to be a rough one. So the, now that they have them remastered with uh, with new controls, yeah. now I'm ready to go through and do them again. Because yeah, maybe, I missed, maybe some I camera them. controls, rotating camera, maybe. <laughs> yeah, because I ended, I had when I was playing through all of the games, I had to skip the earliest ones because I just couldn't do the controls. I just couldn't do it. Uh, I, so remember, I, I remember hitting it. the buttons, like if I needed the camera to rotate, you had to like turn 90 degrees. So you had to hit the, oh the turn key like four or five times. And then the camera would rotate a little bit. So then I turned back so that I, that was just to get the camera to align just enough. I remember <laughs> yeah. doing that pain in the butt. Uh, just the two Raider remastered one, two and three. Uh, is it? Are you going to add it to your backlog? The cones, yes, will be added to my backlog. <laughs> so chat. Yeah, I just I'm still iffy on this. You guys got to remember, we played this when uh, when it was uh, you know on a CRT, you know, and, and trying to play these games that were made that were barely playable on a CRT with the high def TVs we have now. Oh no, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's it's uh, hopefully this remaster definitely fixes the uh, quality of life controls. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, <laughs> and and the hit points and all that. I think camera control needs to be fixed for sure. Yeah, or at least yeah. added on because it didn't really have it. This is the, of course, the Laura that is my favorite Laura. That is disproportional Laura. So <laughs> shout out to to her. She's the she's the reason why the femme fatale became so popular. She was she literally became a cultural phenomenon. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Game Complainers is on 9.30 p.m. Eastern on Wednesdays. That's right. It is a late show, so be sure to, uh, if you're up late, to check it out on Wednesday. We'll be on. It's going to be awesome. Uh, let's see. Fastback says, I would get this collection. And Doggy says, I'll pick it up on sale. No time right now. Uh, shout out to my beautiful wife for joining us. Thank you so much for joining us. You are the real MVP of my life. And she goes, hmm. Disproportional Laura, huh? <laughs> that or mm, <coughs> late. <laughs> she she's choking him right now. You just can't see her. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. As I said, I'm still sick. Uh, let's see. Uh, Doug and I says I heard it controls terrible. The tank works better than the new controls option. Dang. Oh. Dang. Oh my. <laughs> All right, so stick to the classics for me. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Up next is The Outlast Trials, a horror game. Uh, all right, Terry, take it away. You can you can summarize this if you want. Skip useless sentences as you feel need. The need. Okay. The original Outlast and its sequel, Outlast 2, were terrifying first-person adventure survival games where, with no way to defend yourself, you survive by hiding, sliding, creeping, crouching, and running through the levels, staying one step ahead of whoever was trying to kill you at that particular moment. Uh, the Outlast Trials takes that formula and adds a four-player co-op and radically over the top villains who hunt you and buddy you hunt you and your buddies down in a series of outrageous death games. After each run, you can upgrade your character through various class-based skill trees before you and your friends jump back into the next terrifying experience. It can be as hysterically funny as it is terrifying, while the gameplay loop of surviving, solving puzzles, and finding an escape is incredibly compelling. 
The game can be played solo, but it's more fun if you find some friends to brave the experience with you or to just, you know, leave them to get killed while you solve the puzzle. And that's probably what I would do. <laughs> so one sacrifice to rule them all. <laughs> I shout out to RWK88. He says, Axel, you're sick of 30 frames? Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. But we'll talk about that maybe later. Uh, let's see. Let's check out the Outlast Trials trailer. And uh, this one is already going to be a pass for me. I don't like these. You've been expressing anger in the therapy. Everything Mother does is love. Whoa. I have to show a little discipline. That's just a firmer kind of love. Interesting. Based on real enthusiasm, we've decided to give you a long leash. You think you got a leash on me? Might be you, Bill, just lose. Got a like how his hands are tied, but he has a cigarette. You're yeah, like, why did they even let him keep it? <laughs> why you ain't nothing but the towel boy in my whore house? Do you recognize these killers? You pull my string? No. You're no. Don't you upset Daddy. It looks like they took a lot from a, a few other games. Yeah, this is giving me like Five Night at Freddy vibes a little bit. Five Night at Freddy's, Bioshock. Oh, this is definitely giving me the, um... Um... Oh, what is that, that game that... Dead by Daylight vibes? That too. Yeah, but the TV screens can be dead behind. It can be Five Nights at Freddy's, yeah? Well. Then they had like that weird puppet thing. <laughs> yeah, the puppets. Has taught me one truth about the human limits of X Men and pain. It's Professor X right there. That's right. There are none. And the president. And hey, the graphics look great, though. Look at it. All right, the Outlast Trials. Terry, are you adding this to your backlog? No. <laughs> no. I played I played Outlast 1 and 2, and they were all right. But I don't have any interest in doing a competitive kind of co-op kind of thing. Mm -mm -mm. You know? I feel like Outlast did a really good job of just being a very linear story where you kind of just try to run through and survive and, and try to figure out what's going on around you. This other element, it feels like they're trying to be another game that already, it's like, uh, I feel like I don't really need that. Okay. So. Uh, Dreadpool, The Outlast Trials, you are a horror fan. This seems right up your alley. Are you adding it to your backlog? <laughs> you know, you say that, and, uh, and I was just at a horror convention yesterday. Yes. I'm wearing an actual shirt right now, by the way. Oh, oh. Humble brag. Um, <laughs> I've never liked the Outlast Trials or the, the Outlast series, but Trials wow. looks interesting. To be honest, it's co-op. You could you you your wife and your daughter could all die together or live together. But I already know your wife is going to sacrifice you. I already know it. Oh, I'm the first one to go. That's right. You are the you are the sacrificial lamb. <laughs> yeah. So no, so, so it's a maybe. This one here is a maybe. Um, I'll try it out. I don't know if I'll add it to the backlog because again, I just not a fan. If 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 it detracts away from the survival part of it, like I, certain games do it just right, and certain ones, that's why Alien Isolation. I just can't can't do it as much as I love it. I, I just, love Alien Isolation. So you'll love this one then. No, no, oh. no. This is not Aliens. <laughs> it's not aliens. I'm an aliens fan. That's the only reason why I even picked up Alien Isolation. That's that's why I picked it up too, and it was disappointing. We haven't even, I don't know, even know how far we've got. We just the game puts me to sleep watching people play it. <laughs> yeah, so imagine, imagine trying to play it. <laughs> so games take effort, guys. Not everything's gonna hold your hand. Well, that's no. why Axel likes it. It's 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 so it's, slow it's paced that he, he he's not getting scared as much. <laughs> so so you'll like this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, 
Let's see. Uh, RWK88 was WTF. It's like, bro, this is wild. Yeah, it really was. Fastback says, says interesting. And you, RWK, can you just hide in that game? That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you could hide to your detriment. All right, uh, let's move it along. Up next is a game called Rounds. And uh, I've never heard of it. So, uh, Terry, take it away. All right. Landfall created the delightfully wacky, totally accurate battle simulator and stick fight the game. Uh, with Rounds, they've created probably the world's first 1v1 roguelike combat game. At the start of the game, each player uses their noodle arms <laughs> to select a card containing a power-up. You're given a half dozen to choose from out of 65 or so. Power-ups can let you shoot straighter, make bullets explode on impact, let your bullets push enemies back, or give you all kinds of other slight advantages. Where it gets interesting is at the end of each round, the loser gets to pick a new card with the new ability. And since abilities stack, by the end of each five-round game, you can create an overwhelmingly powerful custom build. Okay. This mechanic turns on an otherwise simple level-based combat game into a sophisticated roguelike with each player can build their strengths against the other player's weaknesses. The game is never the same from round from one round to the next. All right. Uh, let's check out the trailer. I remember Stick Fight, the game, was very popular for what it was. <laughs> so. It was. Okay. Uh, hard pass for me. <laughs> hard pass. Oh my gosh, what happened? Uh, hard pass for me. Sorry. Not not. Rounds is not for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rogue like random. Um, yeah, and skill based. It Rogue literally like sounds that. like yeah, it's not your corner. Okay. Yeah, to me, to me, it's basically um, Stick Fight and uh, Smash Bros put together. <laughs> so it's not my thing. I don't like platform combat games in general. I'm just not good at platforming to begin with, and then you throw combat and the chaos of that into the mix. I'm always falling off. So, nah, <laughs> I'm good. All right, uh, Dread, rounds. Are you adding into the backlog? Probably not. I am still confused as to how the hell you tell who's winning and who's losing, or then that you keep on getting power ups if you're losing. So it, it seems like it's a you just keep on playing, and there's no real winner because it, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's five rounds apparently, and a different power up every round, and that's just RNG based. I hate RNG. Um, yeah, and if you, just... if you lose. Four out of five times, it should You're have not stopped at three. Win. Yeah, it should have stopped at three. You're going to be so powerful that yeah, you're guaranteed to win the other rounds. I mean, what is that? What it is? What what it's about is to make sure that you never lose. I mean, well, that doesn't I, mean. From what I recall, from like using stick fight as the example. Now, I hated stick fight, but my husband loved it. 
it was all it was more about how many times you would kill someone by, by the time the round end so it would be whoever had the most kills so oh okay yes yeah, so it could be five so rounds. If, they, if they're doing the same thing yeah you're dying a lot but i guess it's going to come down to who had the who who died the least amount i guess <laughs> but, okay uh, yeah that and the only way more... and, and, and so if you end up jumping off the edge by yourself you'll die but that doesn't i don't think that counts as a point for the other person because they didn't kill you mm. yeah yeah wow. so it's, it's interesting yeah. so it's, it's going to be very so think of it kind of very similar to smash bros too if you think about it because smash bros you can fall off and die and you get another life and you can come back and you're fighting it's the same concept and you could win the and you could win the round yeah 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 and fastback is with us he says nope <laughs> absolutely i like that answer yeah. nope <laughs> all right up next is slave zero x wait didn't i do this one as a spotlight game I think you I did. did so talk to us again about it <laughs> all right all right slave zero occult favorite 1999 windows dreamcast game cast the player as a giant rampaging robot in a third person shooter a quarter century later later ziggurat brings us a prequel to that game in a stylish 2.5 d world but unlike the original Slave Zero X plays out as a brawler blended with the precise gameplay mechanics of a fighting game. It's the kind of game that can drive you to toss your controller through a window, but in the next breadth, bread bread <laughs> as you climbing through the window to retrieve it because you just can't stop playing. The art and music are both fantastic and do a lot of help and do a lot to help serve up the rich cyberpunk world hard yes a bit unfair at times maybe rewarding addictive and compelling absolutely all right uh oops here we go let's check it out people of our glorious mega city s19 a terrorist walks among us now is not the time for fear however it totally got the idea for me to show this game as they did. <laughs> You're just ahead of the curve. <laughs> yeah, isn't he like in a mech suit or some kind of something? He's a, yeah, he's a robot. Yeah. And then after him, because he's a robot, right? They're all robots. He wants to take out the the big guy who controls all the robots, so he's kind of like defected from the robots. He's got basically like a virus, and he's self-thinking. <laughs> Hence why he's red. Oh yeah. man, he became Skynet. So he wants to destroy his master. <laughs> Get rid of all the robots. Yeah, I remember this game. You showing off this game already. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah like I yeah. said. And just like then, I want to play it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This one is in the backlog. In the indie backlog. And nobody was talking about this game. I showed it, and look, now Microsoft is talking about it. Hey, maybe they tuned into our podcast. <laughs> maybe. They're maybe. Like, Wait a maybe. This, game, this, this game is still viable? <laughs> Microsoft's like, we have a podcast? Slave <laughs> 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 Zero X. <laughs> All right. Uh, Terry, obviously, you've already played it, right? Yeah, it's 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 pretty crazy. <laughs> uh, uh, Dreadpool Sleep Zero X. Uh, are you gonna play? It, add it to the backlog. It reminds me so much of a Sega game. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and I I said I was gonna play it before. I'm still gonna play it. Slave Zero X. Awesome. Like uh, up next is Choice of Life Middle Ages Two, and Not shout out to yet. Dan the Man Cunningham. Thank you so much for joining us. He says, hey, all, how's everybody doing today? We're doing great, I think. Everybody doing great? Great, yeah. Uh, choice, of, choice of Life, Middle Ages 2. Wow, that is a mouthful. <laughs> all right, yes. Terry, take it away while I find the, the trailer. All right. Finally, this month, we have something completely different. Choice of Life, Middle Ages 2 is a medieval choose-your-own-adventure experience where you play your cards to direct your choices. Each decision you make leads to seemingly endless twists and turns. There are apparently over a thousand different events that you can encounter in the game, along with over 99 ways to do, but you'd have to go through many different playthroughs to find them all. It's a relaxing, casual experience that encourages you to play around with your choices to see where your kingdom will end up. At the end of the first playthrough, 
which might be very short, uh, you'll almost certainly find yourself wanting to jump in and see where, el where else fate and your decisions will take you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Choose your own let's... adventure. All right. That's that's blast from the past right there. <laughs> let's check it out. This is obviously... There is a Middle Ages one, so there's Middle Ages 2, the sequel. They're so showing awesome. a lot of choices, but they're not really giving much story. I mean, it was good enough to get a sequel. Uh, Never is, obey. But, Run but, away, but, dude. Never obey. <laughs> if this is just a uh, pick a choice game, like... Yeah. Uh, like a choose your like you remember the the novels you used to read yeah. it, read and it's like That's what I'm saying there should be there should be there should be more story in between your choices they're just showing the choices oh. yeah that's got to be more to it that they're just not showing in the trailer at least I would hope yeah so uh based on what we just saw uh I'm gonna skip <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm skipping just being straight up honest skipping. This is the, the first one. I just want to see if the trailer is the same. It is exactly the same. Is, yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Skipping. Skip. <laughs> Harry, what do you got? Yeah, this is going to be a skip. This makes me go. There was a, um, a choose your own adventure game called Transylvania. It was a DOS game. And that was better than this, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> uh, I'd rather go back and play that, actually. That was actually a pretty good game. But, uh, but yeah, no. This I feel like <coughs> if they had showed some of the storyline before you made some choices, maybe they could sway me. But it was just choice after choice after choice. I'm like, why am I making these choices? Right. Dread. Well, when when Terry was reading the synopsis on this, you know what it reminded me of? I started picturing like an 80-year-old person trying to navigate the world in or outside of a uh, assisted health care facility. Uh, that probably would have been a better game to play than this. Oh, gosh. Uh, yeah, I'm just saying, I don't know. Uh, the way that the trailer is, it, it's nice to see the choices, but it's not doing it any justice. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, the synopsis gave us better storyline than. Yeah, the trailer was just straight trailer. up choices. Like you, you got to have yeah. a reason for those choices. Like, yeah, I mean, story. it's nice to see that there's so many different options and so many different ways. But let's see how you progress through the story to get to those. To you know, I I saw the little mm -hmm. figure moving around. Again, that could be you know, the escapee from the assisted facility. <laughs> just, <laughs> just saying. Yeah, that's a uh, yeah hard pass. Yeah. All right, so there we go. Those are the six games of the of the month. I think this month is weaker than last month, in my opinion. Yeah. As pass, 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 pass. Already added, but thanks to Terry and pass for me. Wait, well, did you what pass you... on Tomb Raider? Uh, you know, I I played through the first two. I'm not going to buy this just for the third one. Um, yeah, I'm just there. I don't see a reason why I need to buy the remastered collection right now. Now, if they remastered it like Capcom did to Resident Evil level with realistic graphics. Yeah, but no. Uh, how many of these are you interested in? So of these six games, Terry? Well, for me, it'd just be the Tomb Raider just to go back and do them again. Most of these don't interest me, and, and slave, you know, slave. I already <laughs> featured that. So. I was gonna say, <laughs> <laughs> I already, already featured that. So yeah, uh, Tomb Raider would be the only one for me just to go back and see if I can play through it now. Since, yeah, I think I, I could play it as a kid, but I can't play it as an adult. So I'm like, wow. So I, I kind of want to see if I can play it now. <laughs> okay, dread. 
Um, there's three, obviously. Uh, Tomb Raider. Um, hopefully, they fix the controls, right? And then the uh, Outlast actually looks interesting this time around. So okay. that might be another one. And then, obviously, uh, Slave Zero, I'll look at it because Microsoft said it, not because Terry. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 no, I was, already, I was already interested in it before. So <laughs> All right. That one there is a, a, is a give me because we already – we already, we already said that we would want to play this one anyway, you know? Yeah. 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 The, the old classic Sega vibes. So, yeah. Epic. Epic. All right. Uh, but let's keep our thoughts on Indy here. It's time for Terry's Indie Spotlight. Welcome back to my Indie Spotlight, and I got another game for you guys to check out. Now, this is going to be an action-adventure, but it's not going to be your typical action-adventure. I'll dive more into that after the trailer. Let's see, let's see. Let's see. see. Disgusting rat. You're a cute little mouse. <laughs> Trying to flee the rat. <laughs> A mouse named Tilo, and you need to escape the rat dungeon, as you see, and go on a quest to find his true love. He's been separated from his girl. You gotta try to, you know, help him get back. Now, as an action adventure, this is not your typical one because even though the, it, it doesn't have your typical combat uh, system, because I mean, you play as a mouse, and mice are timid. They're they're more of a flea type animal than a uh, fight type animal. So you have to be more is the word i want you, you gotta use your wit <laughs> okay so you're not going to fight your way out of problems like you normally would in a action adventure game this one you're going to be more focused on stealth agility and the art of disguise you know those are you know more the strengths of a mouse <laughs> so you can go have some fun you can make friends you can have dialogue with different creatures so you can go ahead and uh, make friends or you can make enemies along the way. So this game is on all platforms and it's $25. Very nice. Very nice. Um, the chat seems to be digging it. 
Uh, shout out to Sappho. Thank you so much for joining us. You're the real MVP. He says, what game is this? I'm completely digging that. There you go. <laughs> Ghost of a Tale. Uh, Fastback says, looks cool. Yeah. He also has a love for music. He ends up getting like a little guitar. So you, there's there's going to be a musical element as well. He says, true love. Bah humbug. Wow. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, great. Another fantastic. How else is he going to have a hundred babies? <laughs> He's got to find <laughs> love. <laughs> He's got to find love. He's got to reproduce. <laughs> the house is to infect. <laughs> yeah, no, I I rec I recognize this this game. That's why I was like, this seems so familiar. Um, I have seen this game before. Um, and from what I could tell, it is a good game. So two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay, uh let's move on. Let's move the show along if I pull my my notes here. All right, up next is a Hellblade 2. Hellblade 2 is in the news. So, I don't know if you guys know, but they did a uh, they did a game preview to Hellblade 2 to several sites out there. And all the sites came out fantastic. And now, I'm not going to put every Aaron Greenberg, Greenberg quote out there, but I'm just going to read some real quick. Uh, so, from Nerd Bunker... They say Hellblade 2 Senua Saga evolves the best of the original Norse nightmare. Uh, 3D Juegos said, I have played the great Xbox Game Pass exclusive for 2024 before the an analysis, and I can already tell you that Hellblade 2 is more than just impressive graphics. <coughs> IGN. <coughs> <Because coughs> Hellblade 2 is undeniably one of the most graphically impressive games I've ever played. They're probably still going to do it a 5 out of 10. Just being IGN. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> uh, PC Games N says, All told, my hands on time with Hellblade to Saga could have only lasted for 45 minutes at most. But the sensory experience lingered throughout the rest of the day. This is undoubtedly, this is undoubtedly thanks to Ninja Theory's unwavering commitment to realism across all elements of game development. Games Radar Plus says, not only is it a fluid and responsive action adventure game boasting best in class visual fidelity, but it's also an experience with something meaningful to convey. And let's see. Polygon said, it may be a sequel, but it feels like the start of something like a true next gen experience should. GameSpot says, truly, May cannot come soon enough. I can't remember the last time a game preview left me so excited to dive into the full experience. Uh, Senua's Saga Hellblade 2 is set to launch for Xbox Series X and X, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Don't need to read all that. Uh, I'm not going to read another quote from IGN. Sorry. And that's it for the quotes that Aaron Greenberg retweeted. So overall, the industry, the big media, gaming media, seems to be quite high on their experience so far with Hellblade to Senua Saga. Um, did any of that news get you hyped more than you already are for, for this game? I'll go last, as you know, this is my, my most anticipated game of the year. Terry, are you mm -hmm. going to get back into this psychosis? Did you play Hellblade 1? I, 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 I played one. I didn't finish it. I didn't like oh. it. <laughs> I didn't like the first one. Um, so I didn't really have interest in this one, but there... If this experience is a lot better than the first one, then I am intrigued and I might take a shine to it. It's just for me, the I didn't like how slow paced the first one was and I didn't like how predictable the combat was. Apparently the combat took a big jump up okay. here. So if they if they made this w way different from the first one, then I might I, I might try it just to see. And maybe, who knows, maybe I can get into this one. Because, yeah, the first one just wasn't for me. From what I heard, um, the combat is all one-on-one. -on -one. And if you look at the tra this trailer, every time they show a combat scene, it's just her and another bad guy. Never anyone else. Never another bad guy on the screen. So it is all one-on-one -on -one combat. So they want you to focus on it. So, yeah, it, it it's, it's looking epic to me. So her versus the giant. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Dread. Dread. 
Did any of those those get you hyped up? And guys, are you hyped for Hellblade to send a saga? Let us know. We'd love to hear what you guys have to say. I'm as hyped up as I've always been about it. Um, just not overly hyped up like some others. Um, not downplaying it. I'm not upplaying it. Uh, I'm just gonna enjoy it for what it is. Uh, I see that it's you know better graphics. Uh, it looks like they have a, a developed a better storyline uh, and to go with the combat. So hopefully the puzzles won't be too bad because I've had some issues pr previously. And um, but yeah, you know when you line up certain things and you're like why isn't it working and i'm looking at youtube and i'm like i'm lined up exactly the same so hopefully they fix those kind of little minute issues that keeps you from staying in the story so yeah yeah i'm just tired of listening about it <laughs> bring on the game the last five years yeah let's just bring on the game let's stop talking <laughs> about it uh, um, no. so as you guys know this has been my most anticipated game now for two years running as I thought it was going to come out last year. Not because Xbox announced it. I just thought it was trailer time, you know, three trailers, then launch the game. <laughs> but it got delayed to this year. And when we finally got that release date of May 20 something, I just, oh, oh my gosh, even more hyped. And now that everybody's talking, like they talked more about the combat being one-on-one. -on -one, I'm like, yes, the fact that they, um, Ninja Theory went into the combat on one of their um, developer um, videos that they said that every movement in combat is um, is um, what is it? It's it's live action. So like every single thing that they did here in this combat was actually captured. There is no like every user input was react was captured there is no like oh the game is just going to take the the measurements and just do what it does right so everything has weight to it uh people are saying that the parry window is bigger and more forgiving but uh i guess if you miss it it's less forgiving <laughs> like for your health so that's kind of really cool um the fact that it i like the fact that this game is going to be shorter than a hundred hours uh because I really feel that with her psychosis and the way they want you to experience the game, if they added a bunch of filler, it would take away from it, right? So yeah, you might still get some of those uh, the puzzle puzzles of aligning what's what she's seeing and stuff. So that's kind of cool, and I just cannot wait. I cannot wait for this game. I am more hyped than ever, than ever for this. Um, and I'm really high. I'm really glad that people are saying, "No, oh, it's the best looking game they've ever seen." Uh, that it finally feels next gen. And this is what we've all been saying. We feel that no game has taken advantage of the current hardware. And this might be the first game to do so. Um, and thank God it's an Xbox game. That's right. Xbox is number one, as uh, one of our guys would say normally. So uh, let's see. Uh, let's check it with the chat. Seffel says, I'm sorry, I really don't care for these media guys. They threw out their own credibility a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> Fastback says, loved Hellblade 1, loved the combat, and definitely playing Hellblade 2. Don't care if it's 30 frames per second. Okay. Uh, Saffle says, I agree with Dread. Uh, Fastback says, play with a headset. Yeah, we all agree with Dread. Oh, We're yeah. tired of seeing and hearing about it. We want to play it. If you don't have a high-end system, <coughs> headset it is. Headset. All the way. I, as a matter of fact, um, for, my, for Christmas... Um, my wife ended up getting me a Halo headset and it works amazing. I'm going to make sure that it is charged all the way for this game. I'm turning off that chat. I'm going full private mode. No one interrupt me. <laughs> Seffel says, I'm tired of the narrative when Xbox does something. Let's raise the bar, move the goalposts. Sure, they're doing this thing and that thing, but they're not doing this thing, this other thing, or therefore it's bad. Um, that's just normal media for the since 2013, man. Unfortunately. That's been the media since 2013. You're You've just summarized the entire media since 2013. So, or, yeah. Or in short terms, <laughs> Xbox tax. Hashtag Xbox tax. <laughs> All right. So we are most excited for this one. Uh, Terry, but that's how we feel. How does the chat feel? All right. Are you more hyped for Hellblade 2 after the positive media reaction? 57% said they feel the same, but they still can't wait. 
28% said yes, they can't wait. They are more hyped. And 14% say no, I'm less hyped now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so it was brought up, frame counts were brought up earlier in the chat. So I'm just we're just gonna address it. Um, so Hellblade uh two is going to be 30 frames on the xbox series consoles including the x and s but it will have higher frame rates available on pc again giving us the starfield treatment um terry how do you feel about console players getting locked to 30 again this is one of those things where i feel like it comes down to the type of game you're playing and I do agree with the devs doing this one at 30 because they said they want to have a more cinematic experience. So I get that. Um, so I don't have a problem with that. Uh, I know some people, they claim that they can't play anything less than 60, which I, I, I that's BS. <laughs> but um, uh, I understand when they, when they promote hardware to do certain things, people want all of the software to do what the hardware can do. And that's, you know, one of the kind of the flaws of these gaming consoles and stuff is they keep making hardware and we don't utilize it. And it's been doing this for generation after generation. Um, but it's the same token when you when you look at how games are made and stuff, it's one of those things where Sometimes 30 frames is the better way to go for certain games. It really is the better way to go. And it just, it doesn't work with the narrative of, well, we got to have the most powerful machine and we got to do this and that. Yeah. And so, so people, people get it twisted. Okay. Okay. Uh, Dread, how do you feel about the whole 30 versus 60 thing? <sighs> you know, said it before um you can play it on other consoles at, at 30 frames per second you can play um i don't know you can play the twitter games you can you know a lot, there's a lot of stuff going on that i understand if you're going if you're playing 60 frames a second and you drop down to 30 frames a second you can tell there's there, there is a feel that you can feel and that that doesn't apply to all games either though but it also applies to the tvs you have um, you know, that's why, we, you know, we were talking about game mode and this and that. So I understand, you know, but this is something that it's, it's, you can only fit, and I'm going to go with this the box analogy. You can only fit so many things in a box. So if you want this high definition graphics fidelity and us and that, you're going to have to lose something. And unfortunately you're going to have to lose your frames. So it is what it is. Um, but I do believe that they can they can milk the power out of this console. They have yet <coughs> to do that. They have yet to show the true power of the system, you know, because you look at the old consoles, by the end of the generation, they were doing stuff that you couldn't believe that they could do at the beginning of the generations, you know. And then here we go at Xbox One. We had the refresh so we could do more. But they really didn't, you know, at the time they, they were pushing the uh, the CPU as, as hard as it could. But Gears figured out a way to use the uh, GPU side from the uh, the One X to do more than, you know, because mm -hmm. they had to figure something out. So they were milking a different part of the system to do more, you know. And I have a feeling they could do that here. It's just everybody's too busy trying to get the next console out everybody's too busy you know trying to show that they have better better builds for developers um but the developers haven't utilized every inch of power and, and i think that's it that's the issue part of it is because pc is is getting to the point where it's that much more powerful than it used to be back in the days um what was it the xbox 360 was more powerful than your computer you know so now that the graphics cards are so so powerful everything's getting to a point that it's so so much better on pc you know you're brute forcing a lot of the stuff on pc that people don't realize just like we brute forced um 
um, Cyberpunk 2077, right? Those were made for the one and PS4 consoles. That, that's what the, that's the specs. And PS5 and uh, the series consoles were brute forcing it. They, you know, they they didn't optimize properly. They finally optimized later on. Mm-hmm. So that's the that's the issue I'm seeing. But other than that, why do, why do we keep on bringing negativity? Like, oh, it's not this, it's not that. Let these devs do what they do. I do insist that they put the work in also to optimize better and to actually use the tools that would give them the ability to do the <clears throat> 60 frames a second. I believe that they could still do, depending on the game, 120 frames a second. So just let them do their thing. Uh, but I do insist that you respectfully request and be persistent on your request to what you want from these devs. But be respectful about it. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna paint anything wrong here. I have been Team 60 for since forever because it's Xbox first party. I think doing things. And um, they should be the leaders. Yeah, I think doing anything other than sixty makes them look bad. Like between between you and me, right? If you don't, again, if you don't do it, what makes you think third party is going to do it? That that has always been my thing. Xbox has to lead, and they're not really leading the this charge of what they want their system to do or showing what their system can do. You know, um. When you look at the at the opposite side of the uh, the coin here, Team Blue, there's not a single first party game that is not sixty. Not a single one. All of their games are hitting sixty, first party, right? Um, so the fact that Xbox can't hit sixty on their own first party games, and I and it's not just Hellblade, right? I'm talking all of them, like, like. Redfall didn't hit 60 to begin with. Um, Starfield's not hitting, didn't hit 60. Not, none of that. Now, um, is it going to stop me from playing a game? No, but it just sucks, you know, because the media is going to eventually catch on to this and use it. Because the, if you remember, one of the big things against the Xbox One was that it could only do 900p instead of 1080. And now you're getting the, these games that can only do 30 frames instead of 60, and the media is going to eat it up. Xbox is putting themselves in a bad spot from first party, not from third party, from first party. You know, at least back on the Xbox One days, first party games always looked fantastic. They were more than 900p. A lot of them went up to 1080, all that good stuff, right? But here it's like they're not showing they're not leading in my opinion now that being said i have played starfield on both my xbox and my pc both at the 30 34 4k 30 and at the uh dynamic resolution 60 and i can tell you right now that the game did look better by a long shot on my xbox being locked to that 4k 30 full graphical experience um, that they wanted to present with Starfield. Um, you cannot tell me it's an artistic choice or a dev choice or, or any of that, because if it was, then they'd lock it to 30 on everything, including PC. But they didn't, right? Um, so do I think Hellblade 2 is going to look better on my TV than it does on my PC? Absolutely, because my PC is built to prioritize frames. I, I set all my settings that way, to hit frames first. Uh, now I can do I can unset it, but then uh, if you know anything about PC gaming, every time you mess with the settings, you mess something like ten other things up. I get it working, and I'm not messing with it, right? Um, so the but there will be PCs out there, you know, some 4090s that are running, you know, i9 extremes and stuff like that that will be able to hit 4K 60, but by brute force, as Dreadpool said. Brute force method, not the optimized method. And so am I going to pay four or $5,000 for a PC that can brute force it to 60, uh, 4K 60? No, I'm not. Um, but 
I definitely do think that gamers, as Xbox gamers, need to start holding Xbox to this 60 frames. You guys said it. The monster that eats monsters. The monster's getting beat up. I'm just saying. The monster's getting beat down by, by, by your own developers, your internal developers. You guys have to do something. Get your games up to 60 as a whole. So, you know, how is the combat going to feel like at 60, especially if it's reactionary combat? Uh, I don't know. If, if I have to parry and I have to parry at 30 frames versus 60 frames, it makes a difference. It makes a difference. My reaction time makes a difference. Um, get good. <laughs> I'll get good, but uh, it's going to take a couple of deaths. So, yeah, it's a, to me, it's a first party issue. It it's showing develop it's showing other devs that they don't need to prioritize sixty, and sixty needs to be the priority. We you guys said that you set our expectation. We said everything's going to be sixty. We were so happy everything was going to be back to sixty like it was when we were younger. Um, I just don't understand why everything needs to be four K. Everything I would sooner like. When was it sixty? I got to ask you that. What was sixty? When was it 60 when we were younger? Uh, Your PS1 was at 60. My Dreamcast was at 60. My Sega Genesis was at 60. Technically, it wasn't. Well, it was refreshing at 60. No, it wasn't. I bet you it was. No, it wasn't. Okay. So I, I, I'm a TV guy. It was, actually, <laughs> it was actually half of that because you were only getting half the frame going, going across the screen, and then we would redraw the next. So it wasn't true. Truly... I, I understand the difference between P and I. But it was still shooting out 60 frames. So, yeah. Anyways. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> so, anyways. The the 60 needs to be something. Something out there. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with playing games at 30. I think the games are playable at 30. But this thing better be locked at 30 and never drop a frame. If you're telling me you, you can do 60 on PC. If you're unlocking frame rates on PC, there's a reason why. So, yeah, that, that's all I'm saying. And again, I really feel that console gamers have to... Well, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? Console gamers are still not being treated great uh, because of this. This whole, you know, hey, PC guys. Hey, PC, Xbox guys. You guys get the 4K60. Hey, console gamers, you guys are at 30. You don't like it? Buy a PC. That seems to be the, the whole thing. You don't like it? Buy a PC. You remember the old Don Matrick? Oh, we got a console for you if you don't like being online. Get an Xbox 360. It's the same thing. Go get something else. Don't buy an Xbox. Buy a PC. Just throwing it out there. Uh, let's see. And, and that's just my opinion. Let's see. Uh, Xbox Series X and S already had games at 60 and 120. Yeah, but it should be standard. You forgot to put 30 in there. You forgot to put 30, 60, and 120. Well, you realize that no Unreal Engine game at 5 as of right now is 60. How many Unreal Engine game 5 games are there? Uh, is Fortnite at 60? That, that's a legitimate question. Is Fortnite at 60? I don't know. Let me see. Is Fortnite... There's only like five games or something like that. Uh, Fortnite can be enabled all the way up to 120. On Xbox? Uh, let's see. Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. Fortnite now runs at a smooth 60 frames per second. Hmm. Is it hyper realistic? Of course it's not. It's an oh. open world game. I told you for oh. Unreal Engine can't do crap. Oh, okay. And this is an open world. Hence. <laughs> this is an the, open world. It's not like this game is the trying balance, to keep schedule yeah. of a bunch of NPCs and all this stuff. Yeah. It's, it's the not. balancing act. Yeah. So, so yeah. And again, Unreal Engine 5 is much bigger. <clears throat> with all the tech that's in there. So again, it, it's, it's that balance that they have to figure out. <clears throat> Let's see. And fastback 
Again, Tomato Tomato. Are PlayStation games at 48K60? No, but they're at 60. They all got performance mode, 60. Let's see. Uh, some Xbox first party games do hit 60. Yeah, some. They should all hit 60. Let's see. And, and here's my, my point again. Xbox is an ecosystem on multiple devices. If you want 60 plus, play on PC. Don't buy an Xbox. Get a PC. You have options of dead uh, at the day of launch Xbox gives. Yes. Shout out to Ice Queen Gaming. Thank you so much for joining us. You are the real MVP. Hopefully you're feeling better. Appreciate you being here. Let's see. Uh, let's see. And Monsters That Eat Monsters does not mean 60 plus all the time. Hellblade 2 is a cinematic beast. Play first before judging. Hey, I'm still going to enjoy it. But uh, you can't give me that whole cinematic crap. If they really, if they really meant, oh, you know, we want the gamers to have a cinematic experience, they would lock PC to thirty as well. They didn't mean that. That's just a bunch of PR crap talk. Yeah. And Dragon's Dogma, which is at thirty, says hello. Yeah, Dragon's Dogma is also an open world game with lots of NPCs on the screen at the same time. All that stuff. It's just different. Let's see. Uh, Saffo says, console gamers need to realize you're not getting the performance of a $2,000 rig from a $500 box. Sorry, it just doesn't work that way. This, is, this could really get off into a different topic. I think games need to be made for console first and PC later. Yes. You know, this is why Nintendo is so successful. People want to know why Nintendo games sell Nintendo consoles. It's because Nintendo focuses on a console experience. You know, they're not trying to do movies. They're making games and experiences that are fun. Nintendo focuses on fun first. So, yeah. And, you know, by the way, Ninja Theory is not like Ninja Theory didn't know they were going to be making this game for a $500 console. Just say, throwing it out there. Throwing it out there. They knew they weren't going to be on a $2,000 rig. Let's see. Uh, Fastback says, uh, and shout out to Splendiferous. Thank you so much for joining us. You're the real MVP. I don't know if I got you, buddy, but just in case, there you go. Uh, 60 plus don't mean game of the year either. Consoles will always be behind PC. Next gen console, 60 all the time, but folks will cry. Why can't hit 120 all the time? Why, why? We've been locked at 30 for... Jesus Christ, for almost 20 years now it's time we move away from 30 and 60 plus don't mean give me the year 30 plus don't mean give me the year either bro i mean that's a non-statement <laughs> so yeah uh let's see uh 30 fps isn't going anywhere if the devs aren't aiming for 60 they should not be forced again yeah. again let them make their games yeah let them make their games but don't tell me that it's for a cinematic experience when you're not locking everything to 30. It's obviously not a cinematic experience when another platform can go over 30. Because where's their cinematic experience? Oh, their cinematic experience is at 60. <laughs> you know? Uh, let's see. <clears throat> oh, yeah, see? So Joby says he runs Fortnite at 1440 at 120 frames on Xbox. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Oh, uh, well, that's, that's right. You also have to have a TV that can run that or a monitor that can run that. Yep, sure do. Spent a lot of money because they told me it was going to. They told me. Mm -hmm. I, I upgraded my TV to that had VRR because they said it was going to be there. So, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. You tell me it can and I go and I buy all this equipment for it. And then it, it would have been fine with a 30 because that's what you guys are targeting for. Yeah, Rob uh, Robocop, from what I hear, is um, stuff on the outsides gets all blurry. Uh, but the rest of it, everything that's in focus is is running good and clear. So, yeah. again, there's that trade-off, you know? Mm -hmm. So Yeah, that performance mode trade-off is definitely there. Uh, and, you know, over there, uh, Final Fantasy VII, um, also, when you throw that thing on 60, it just... The texture it is so bad that they actually say play it on 30 because it's better. So yeah. That's uh there are some, definitely some games that are badly optimized for 60, but not first party. Uh shout out to Sith Lord. Thank you so much for joining us. You are the real MVP. 
Uh, yeah, RWK88, thank you so much. 1080p60 looks good to me. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I would drop, drop my resolution and give me 60. I would 100% take it. Because... I swear to God, if next game, if the next console they bring out, like, oh yeah, man, this thing is gonna do 8K. Who? What? <laughs> you know, there's no need to bump up to 8K right now, or in the next 10 years. <clears throat> um. Yeah, and I'm sorry, sorry for your loss there, Ice Queen Gaming. Um, you know, losing a loved one is always tough. So sorry for your loss. Yep. Sorry. Yeah. Triple, I can't wait for Gear 7 in 2029. Gear 7 won't be till 2032, but brother, 2032. Well, that's when they're gonna start talking about it though. So yeah. I, oh, oh yeah. I, I already I already predicted this because you know how uh, uh Jeff Grubb had mentioned gear six that they're gonna be talking about it and they're giving them all this credit. So I'm first to say it for gear seven, and mm -hmm. I'm uh respectfully requesting to add in a war. So of war. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it'll be gear seven of war. Gears of war seven. Gears of war uh -huh. seven. Uh let's see. There's give and take on consoles. 4K is more stable at 30, 60 FPS is more stable at 1090. Yeah, there is. Uh everything is give and take on it in the it, uh it, it in would the be game nice development to, world. Right. And it would be nice to have those kind of options too. Yeah. It would be nice if I had to be, had the option to select. Uh, Nintendo is not at 4K new, but they're number one on console sales, and they're also number one on on uh, first party game. Uh, what what do they call it? Where more people buy first party games? Oh, uh, uh, attachment rate. Com attachment rate. They're also number one on attachment rate. Uh, they also have probably the one of the highest rated first party studios of all time. Um, as most of the games are highly rated, uh, and, and because Nintendo focuses focuses on making games first, not resolutions or not realisms or anything like that. Uh, Dred, you're you're muted. <laughs> I think he did it on purpose. <laughs> Dred, you're muted. If you can't hear me. Hello? No, you're still... I can't hear you. Can you hear him, Terry? Negative. Negative. All right. Uh, let's see. If a game looks good enough, I will... I, I don't care about FPS. Hey, some people don't. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I agree Xbox has mixed messages on this, but they have to leave it up to the developers consistently. Uh, All right, now those you are get internal through. developers. They don't need to. Trust me, I've worked for a corporation. They they can literally just go in there and say, hey, everything has to be 60. Can you yeah, hear me I can now? hear you now. Yeah, I can hear All you. All right. All right. And I was going to say here from Mr. 60 FPS, but I'll play uh, Zelda any day. Nintendo never promised me 60. Did they? Oh, because they Did promised they? sixty. Is this is this is the? Yeah, issue. that's my big Again, issue. You see, you see the flip. See the, the, flip? the, the game is, is okay. no flip. If you advertise, 30. you better deliver, right? Did right, they ever say Harry. If you if someone advertised to you a car with four hundred horsepower, you expect four hundred horsepower, right? Yeah. But <laughs> do you think? But if they ever do you think a Toyota Corolla is advertising to you four hundred horsepower, and are you going to upset that? A, okay. Can you get upset well. that a Toyota Corolla <laughs> doesn't have four hundred horsepower? So honestly, when cars is not a good one to do because they tend to <coughs> under tell you what they can do because they're not allowed to go. So there's an agreement with Japan and some other countries to where they won't succeed a certain amount of horsepower. So they'll tell you that they're within that limit when in reality they go above that. So you're buying a car thinking you're getting 200 and some in reality, you could hit the 300. You can hit. But I'm just saying, if you buy a <laughs> so sports car for sports car reasons, right? Do you think your Toyota Corolla? Should be held to the same standard as your sports car. Yes. Quality wise. I hold on, I want to hear. Now Toyota Corolla See, was never advertised with sports car features. I okay, so I wouldn't expect the Corolla to have be to the same level as a sports car. There you sports, go. It's it's it, it's not a sports car. That's like you comparing. Like, 
Xbox to Nintendo? Which, I know. It's, would no, that would, would be, right. that'd be, that'd be <laughs> more like you comparing like the Xbox, like one X, <laughs> which is like the elite version of the thing to the day one edition Xbox one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> there, there's going to be differences. I'm just saying one advertised the monster that could eat monsters and the other one advertised the fun time. Right. <laughs> So why would I hold them in, accountable in to 4K60 <laughs> when they never advertised yeah. it? I could have a fun time in a Corolla. Trust me. Yeah. Yeah. I will and there's I a lot a of mods Nintendo you can without do. getting 4K60. <laughs> well, the advertised was fun. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Fastback. Fortnite is cartoonish. Easier to optimize 4K60. Yeah. Yeah. As I said, most uh, Unreal oh, Engine so, is just so wait not a second. good. Okay. I, I see something that popped up and it reminded me something. What's that? So you you like your PlayStation? I do like my PlayStation. Yeah. You know on the on the box it says 8K. 8K. Yeah. Where's the 8K? Oh wait. Oh, Nowhere. no one's complaining about that. False oh, advertising. I'm sorry. I didn't know this was a PlayStation podcast for me to complain I'm about. That. I'm just saying. <laughs> there's there's a lot of things that go out there just because it was intended this way, right? Uh, your Corolla can be intended to be driven on the road, but some people will take it off road. Some people will put bad gas in it. Some people will put race gas in it. So it all depends on the driver. You can't say that it's a bad car or a good car. Um, overall, you're going to see the ratings, but the driver is the one that's going to ultimately drive it down the road. And if you're a bad driver and you're swerving all over the place, you can't, you know what I'm saying? You can't keep it between the lines. Is that the, the manufacturer's fault or is it the developer's fault? Oh, that's right. The driver's at fault on this one, just like the developers are. And that's why I'm saying Xbox needs to set the standards. They need to set the stage to prove it. And that's it. And I'm they not did. Sit there and go back. There was, a, there was a Scarlet, there was a Scarlet video calling it the monster that eats monsters. 4K right. 60 is going to be the normal. Yeah. Okay. And Aaron Greenberg also said it going forward, which these games were before that. So are we going to supersede everything and, and bring back from the past? Uh, just, I think a lot of it we're arguing over nothing. <laughs> I'm just saying that first party needs to set the example in 30 FPS when uh, when when Xbox advertised and said, "Oh yeah, 4K 60 is going to be doable. 4, 4K 60, we're going to get back to 4 to doing 60 FPS." Blah 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 blah. What 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 was it? Xbox said all that, right? And here here their own internal developers are like 30. It's just, uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, sh Legendary Joby says, sorry, sorry, but 30 FPS isn't going anywhere. I didn't mention anything about cinematic. 30 will be around for a long time, buds. When 8K comes, 30 will be the entry point. Jesus. When 8K comes, <laughs> 15, wrong, will be, 15 will be fifteen will be the normal. We'll have more Axel tears. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here, here first, right? Hey. Axel said, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, don't be mad that I hold Xbox to a standard. Oh. No, I'm not out on right, Twitter now, now you you know, tagging a bunch of people, being angry at them, right? I'm just upset because um, I don't see why they can't make games to hit 60 frames per second. This gen. Just don't see it. <clears throat> don't see it. Uh, let's see. Uh, I agree graphics or performance option is nice, but how much more work is that for the devs i don't care they're getting paid what do i care how much work they uh, gotta do <laughs> depends on the devs man some of yeah. them make their games out of their own pocket dude <laughs> depends on the dev yeah uh let's see the only time fps mattered for me was in the fighting games and shooters if the game is doing neither i'm good okay uh let's see yeah that's the deal we got scammed into buying 500 dollars box for quick resume <laughs> that's about it quick resume <laughs> is amazing though i'm not gonna lie to you quick resume is amazing you know what? I wonder if uh, th this is just uh, my thing here. Xbox has had this RAM problem since the 360, where, where on 360 they had the best RAM and therefore they had the best ga the games ran best on Xbox. Xbox One, the RAM was not great. On the Xbox Series console, the RAM is divided into two types of RAM, um, whereas you know the competition has stuck to one type, fast RAM, and I wonder. I wonder if that's playing that big of a part why games hit 60 easier on the competition than they do on the Xbox. So you you would I, I you would think they would learn. 
throw some damn good RAM in this console. But apparently they didn't. So I'm just kind of throwing it out there that I feel that a lot of these issues that Xbox has experienced with, you know, back in the uh, back on the Xbox One generation where a lot of their games stuck to 900p instead of 1080 is because of the RAM. And now a bunch of the games can't hit 60, um, you know, because of the RAM. Like you, you think they would learn throw RAM in there. <laughs> like uh, Jason Ronald needs to learn to use some RAM. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nintendo games due to art look can easily hit 60. Maybe if they went on a 20 year old chip, <laughs> that chip is old. I think we went over it last, last week, last week where we think we saw that the Tegra chip was 15 years old or something like that. Dread, did you freeze? No. Okay. That's just you. Just okay. me. I'm working on something for you. Oh, oh man. Let's I'm see. On something for you. Your iPhone, your phone is advertised to have so much storage. Do you actually get all that storage? No, I do. I get all the storage. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> the answer is no, because they always have bloatware on it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Dreadful. Check this out. <laughs> I'm I'm coming for you, Axel. I'm coming for you in the ambulance. <laughs> nice be sure to be sure to pick me up in the reality section <laughs> in the in the uh got lied to section of xbox <laughs> uh, hold on where, where, yeah be, be sure to be sure to pick me up in the uh, quick resume section of xbox bro <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sorry, Axel, I'm with Miss Thank Guy. Xbox Series X is a GT and PC is a 4 GT. I understand the difference no matter the advertising. Uh, yeah, yeah, I understand the difference too. I understand the difference too. And the price. Yeah, and the price. Yes. But you were comparing, here you were saying Nintendo and Xbox, and now you're changing to Xbox and PC, bro. Keep, keep, your, keep your comparisons even. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Is Resident Evil 4 4K60? I'm unsure, sir. I'm unsure. Uh, let's see. Next gen 8K30, 4K60, 1080p, 60 to 120. Maybe, maybe we'll see. Uh, those PlayStation first party games this gen are PS4 games ported to PS5. No room, real engine 5 first party 60 FPS games either. Hey, hey. We just, we just proved that. We just proved that uh, Fortnite would like to say hello at 120. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, even Square says to play Rebirth at 30 frames. Yeah, we, we said that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not trying to be an armchair dev. I'm a customer. That's saying that 60 should be standard. I'm not trying to tell them how to do it. I'm just saying it should be because they advertised it. You know that quote where it say the customer is always right? Yeah. That's sure. a misquoted quote. That's a Very. misquoted quote. Yes, I see. So, what a, should it be replaced? Be replaced with like the customer is always misled. Who's misleading <laughs> you? Xbox did for what? For telling me that they were going to do 4K 60 after they um, they they decided that. So every game going forward from that point will be, but the, each game that started afterwards or before that won't be afterwards. So. Mm. You know what? Just to to prove my point. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm gonna find it now. The customer is always right in a matter of taste, with the idea that the salesperson should not judge what the customer wants that th doesn't mean that they're correct in their opinion mm. 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 okay i found it all right hold on here we go from xbox them selves see okay. as you guys are saying axel's going to the ambulance here thanks to the advertising xbox today i'm going to turn the volume all the way up for those in the back here we go hey that's what? right so you can hear it. You can hear it. 
or six to ensure that we're getting the best performance possible. It's going to usher in resolution and frame rates that we've never seen before, like never seen before. We're looking at frame rates up to 120 frames per second. 8K capability, variable refresh rate. Next gen ray tracing. It's real time because it's hardware accelerated for the first time ever. What I'm personally most excited. So frame rates like we've never seen before. I've seen yeah. 30 a long time from Xbox. <laughs> Frames up to 120, but we're at a fourth of that at 30. Right? <laughs> All right. Cool Cat Terry and I are going to make a game. I know you said you're only going to make one, but now you're going to make two. Oh, God. <laughs> we're going to do, do an 8K 120 game. I don't want to do You're going to see how... Game. How crappy it is going to be yeah. only for the fact so we can meet those measures, but you're going to see how pixelated it's going to be. Mm. Uh, th there won't be much of a story. It's, it's going to be very <laughs> linear. So, so think about that. Yeah. See yeah. rocket league 120. <laughs> rocket league 120. That's right. All those, all those games owned by Epic are, are running that great games. Uh, my God. I feel like I'm repeating the same thing over and over to an audience that's just not listening here. Uh, who said they were talking about Xbox games? They were talking about games in general, not just their games. Again, Xbox should set the example for everybody. If Xbox doesn't do it, why would anybody else care? So yeah, and uh, Crazy Greek dude, Rocket League is at one twenty. That's cool. Yeah, <laughs> Doggy Dog now needs to be the new party ref. That's <laughs> right. Uh, how many games does the Xbox One have at one twenty versus the Series X? Even the PS Five. Well, obviously the Series X has way more games at one twenty than the Xbox One. You no, know, you you could probably play that game rounds that we had for the Indie Selects. You could probably play that at one twenty. Uh, yeah, maybe, <laughs> probably. It doesn't have that much. Anyways, to, you know, do anything with. Anyways, that's that's what we what we got. Right? You know what else is at one twenty? If you if you look at it right, what me driving the ambulance? <laughs> Are you driving at one hundred and twenty rotations of tires per second? There. Yes, I got my light on. My lights on. You see it? My yeah, tires I see it. <laughs> I'm driving my ambulance to come get you. <laughs> Oh man, you guys are just upset that I'm holding these these devs <laughs> accountable. Or they're not devs really, but just really Xbox, because they're the ones who should be setting the sound the example. Hey, just my expectation from Xbox first party is definitely higher than it is from uh you know Capcom with Dragon's Dogma 2. So just yeah. because your car says 140 on there doesn't mean it's gonna make it up to 140. There's always these other things out there like wind. Road, traffic, cops, traffic. <laughs> Condition your car is in at the time. <laughs> your tires, your gas. <laughs> that makes a big difference. It does. All right. So Terry, how how does the, the chat feel about Hellblade only being 30 frames? All right. Should Hellblade 2 be at 60 frames on the Series X? 45% said I don't count frames when I play. There, take that, Axel. <laughs> 27%, yes, they promised us 4K60. And another 27% said, no, 30 frames is fine. There you go. <laughs> uh, look, GOB, they did not target 30. It's more than 30 on 60. If that was a true statement, it would be locked at 30 on the PC. Throwing it out there. Or brute forced. Yeah. What's going to hacks it? So again, doesn't matter. Yeah, but what? as I said, I'm still gonna play it. And I think it's gonna look better on my Xbox. Uh, fidelity wise, all the details are gonna be much better on my Xbox. Axel's than on my gonna PC. Axel's gonna be playing. I can't take this. It's thirty. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have died if this was at sixty. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Old man physics here. Uh, I hit the button. It's not working. 
We we got so far off on that topic, it's not even funny. I did anyway. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I did. All right. Uh so moving the show right along. Uh while I'm angry, I'm gonna stay angry. VGC Video Games Chronicles decided to throw some shade to Phil Spencer. Saying Phil Spencer, long last cast of Xbox's savior, may be remembered as the man who killed it. Wow. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. So, uh, I'm going to skip all the crap and go into the. Skip all the crap, so then and there's no article? <laughs> I don't think we, we need to read the recap here. Uh, so, let's see. He's talking about the the polygon. Should we should we do the polygon stuff first and then this? Because he's he's talking about the polygon section here. Hmm. Hmm. I say we do the polygon first, just so we have some context. What do you think, Terry? It's Go your for. show. <laughs> Go for it. All right, let's go to polygon first. Change of the show number five. All is right, in, here we go. Is it in sixty frames a second? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Let's check it out. Do you see it? But only if you pay for YouTube Premium. Uh, I let's see. <laughs> I pay for YouTube Premium. I still don't see it. Here we go. So uh, Polygon interviewed Phil Spencer, and they broke the and uh, they broke the the interview into three sections and uh, into several articles. So yeah, we're gonna go with this. <laughs> still love you too, Fastback. Let's see. Uh, so we're going to go into this first. So first he talks about an Xbox handheld, a, a handheld Xbox. Microsoft Gaming Chief can't stop thinking about it. So I want to talk mostly about these lines here. Right? Where uh, Phil was talking that he had his Lenovo Legion Go, which is massive, by the way. Uh, he goes, I want my Lenovo Legion Go to feel like an Xbox, Spencer told Polygon in an inter interview during the GDC. I brought the Legion Go with me to GDC. I'm on the airplane and I have this list of everything that makes it not feel like an Xbox. Forget about the brand. More like, are all the games there? Do all my games show up with the save, with the save files that I want? I'll tell you one game that doesn't right now and it's driving me crazy is Fallout 76. It doesn't have cross save. I want to be able to boot into the Xbox app in a full screen, but in a compact mode. And I want all of my social experiences there. Like, I want it to feel like the dash of my Xbox when I turn on the television, except on those devices like the Lenovo Legion Go. According to Spencer, Xbox, the Xbox hardware team led by Roan Sones is considering different hardware form factors and things that they could go do as it plans the future of Xbox hardware. What should we build and what will the find new players, Spencer said, that will allow people to play at times when they couldn't go play in the past? Uh, Spencer described the two approaches to make making Xbox available on handhelds, the hardware versus the software approach. Mm -hmm. As he said, he he has strong feelings about what a handheld Xbox device should feel like, but he also recognizes having learned from the console business that players may choose brands other than Xbox. For those players, Spencer wants to improve the Xbox handheld gaming software experience too, particularly for people who have who have devices running Windows such as the Legion Go and the ROG Ally, which I really want one. Uh, I like the fact that Valve, Lenovo, and Asus went out and innovated a new form factor. And I will say that when I'm pay playing on those devices, it almost feels more like a console than a PC. Nine times out of 10, agreed. Uh, the things that usually frustrate me are more Windows-based than device-based, which is an area I feel some ownership of, of. Like, I want to be able to log in with a controller. I've got my list of things we should do. Uh, let's see. From a game creator standpoint, Spencer said, I can then go build a single version of my game that spans more hardware and reaches more customers. And I would say for players, it reduces the friction. Like, if I want to go play my console for games on the go with a handheld, I don't want to only be able to buy one brand of handheld, right? <coughs> I want to buy everything that we're going to do in the hardware space. I'm sorry, can someone take over? But if somebody chooses to go play today somewhere else, I don't want them to feel like a lesser Xbox player. Scroll. 
Over the past seven years, we've seen the Xbox development team get creative with its software, moving games to new platforms, building up the Game Pass subscription service, and making games playable on smartphones through streaming. As we wrapped our conversation, Spencer wouldn't outright announce an official Xbox handheld, but he did say he sees a similar level of creativity among hardware that Xbox has brought to software. I think it's important, said Spencer, you and I, we've been around for a couple of days. Look at the real inflection points in our industry. Like, look at the Wii. It was hardware innovation that was linked with great software innovation. Absolutely. Hard facts. So uh, the console market has flatlined. The portable market is growing. Do you think the do you think Xbox will do will benefit by having an Xbox handheld, Terry? And would you buy it? I mean, okay, I don't do handhelds, so I would not buy it. But there is a market for handhelds. Um, it's just, it's one of those markets that it's hard to do well in. You know, it's one of those, especially when it comes to gaming. For the longest time, Nintendo has pretty much been the king of the handheld market. Like no one can compete with Nintendo. Um, right. The PC space has been getting into it, and they've been doing quite well with the the, the Steam Deck and then and the ROG Ally. But so things may be changing because compared to how we've seen handhelds in the past with Nintendo, those blow everything out of the water that Nintendo has done. So that's gonna kind of change. It changes the whole ecosystem. Mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, potentially. Uh, <laughs> they could possibly do well but at the same time i don't know i really don't know they're already struggling when it comes to consoles mm -hmm. to get into yet another market hardware market you know it's just looking looking at yeah, microsoft as a whole lo looking at microsoft as a whole they're they're a software company and a hardware company you know they tried doing hardware with phones and they they couldn't compete because apple was you know apple was being jerks and so was Android. <laughs> so <laughs> they, they couldn't. So they couldn't compete because they got locked out from getting out because <laughs> everybody else was, you know, being jerks. So it's gonna. I just see this as being a really tough hill for them to climb when they don't have. They don't have the consumer base in numbers to right. sell. Like you know, compared to like Nintendo or even the PC space, like everybody. Even the PlayStation guys, they buy the PC stuff when it comes to like the Steam Deck, right? Mm -hmm. So, because they, because even PlayStation got rid of their handhelds. <coughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. Like their handhelds sold twenty million. They're like, it was a flop. Yeah. So oh, they brought back the portable flop, you know, or whatever it's called. The, uh, yeah, the PlayStation Vita, the la latest one. No, 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 no. It's... Whatever that that. Uh, that... The remote one, the handheld, the, P the new oh, PSP. The, the PS Portable, Go. right? The PS Portable, right. Yeah. Man. What is it called? The PS Portal. 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 There you go. Yeah, the Portal. So yeah. I don't know. I just, I mean, they could try it, but honestly, since they're kind of behind when it comes to how many users they have, I feel mm -hmm. like they would have a hard time reaching the sales numbers that they're going to need. To, to keep the handheld going and to get keep the support going and the you know what I mean like I, I just don't yeah. see it as something they should be tapping into right now. I think they're on the right track with focusing on cloud because I really see we're gonna be moving further and further away from tangible hardware like that. Everything's gonna be like you just buy whatever device you want to buy and access everything digitally. I don't really. I, I think right now he kind of has a soft spot for the handheld because he is somebody who uses handhelds. <coughs> um, yeah, I use handhelds, so you I know. Totally so, agree. so I get that. You know, he sees that there's a need. <coughs> I just don't think there's a user base for the numbers that he's going to need within the Xbox ecosystem. I'm sorry, I'm yawning, guys. The medicine I take makes me sleepy. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not yawning because you're bored. I'm yawning because my I'm medicated. That, so that I'm not coughing all over this stream as much. That and a little grouchy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I apologize for that. <laughs> I'm grouchy over 30 frames. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, all right, Dread. The the Xbox 
handheld and the XBH. <laughs> all right. So, all right. Here, here, here we go. Think about this, right? Yes. Back in the 360 days, they actually were looking at making a handheld. They were, they've already been doing this in the first place. They've been keeping an eye on this. They chose not to. It was going to be called the X-Boy, um, which was mm -hmm. kind of funny. That, that was the original name that they were looking at calling it. Uh, Sounds like a porno. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it, it was a play on Game Boy. So they, they want, you know, and that was, again, that wasn't going to be the official name, but that's what they were calling it. And, you know, when, when they were looking at making it, if they're going to do it, they're going to call it the X boy and then kind of go from there. And obviously now I can't stop thinking of it. It sounded like a porn. Where'd it go, Terry? <laughs> <laughs> it does. Come on. <clears throat> you put X in anything is pretty much a porn. <laughs> the Xbox why, series X. <laughs> that's right. That's why, you know, the third iteration of the series X, it will, we will steal the hub away from PlayStation. Never mind. Um, <laughs> so the thing is, they've already been looking at it. Steam made it more viable. Um, Switch, we already know, was was a, a trial by fire, right? Oh, man. Switch. They, they, that, was, that was basically, if you think about it, because they were losing. They, they had two divisions. They had their console division. They had the portable division. They literally mm -hmm. combined the two. Mm -hmm. All right. So they were they were making a huge bet. And this was a trial by fire. If this wasn't going to work. We don't know what we're going to do. I mean, they already know, but this was this was something that they were going to. You notice that the GameCube had a handle on it. Do you guys notice? Yeah, that? yeah. So you can travel with it. I remember. All right. Remember the Wii? The Wii was your nunchucks. Right. And what happened the with the Wii controls? U? Yeah. Yeah. What happened with the Wii U? And they added the little tablet to it. The little tablet. And I said, wait a second. What if they find a way to move all of that? into the tablet and you still and the wii u still had nunchucks right they found a way and they they, they found a way they, they made the amazing nintendo switch they showed you what they were doing but you <laughs> have to pay attention you know and xbox is doing the same thing they're paying attention they're watching what's going on now that you have other pc manufacturers making handhelds and they're blowing up you had uh, uh what was it the lead the um, LG Go or something like that. Uh, the Lenovo Legion Go, uh, the LG. What was it? The Cloud one. Oh my! LG God. Cloud, right? Web. The G. What was it called? G Cloud. I rem I know what you're talking about. LG. LG Cloud. Yeah. Go. I know what you're talking about, though. Yeah. Um. Uh, come on, handheld. Uh, Web Dave bought it, and he said he loved it. Yeah, it's a uh, Logitech G Cloud. The G Cloud, yeah, okay, yeah. There you go. Uh, Thank you, legendary oh, yeah. Yobi. Legend, it's called the G Cloud. Yes, there, there you, go. you go. I should have been looking at the other screen. Thanks, Yobi. Um, but yeah, again, that doesn't do anything <coughs> other than play through the cloud. Mm -hmm. Same as my phone, yep. right? Just like our phones, but these newer newer handhelds are actually able to play it natively technically <clears throat> um so you you know so phil's seeing that and if he's if he you know and we know we already know phil travels a lot so this makes sense mm -hmm. for him to have the legion and, and be able to travel with him you know so it makes sense he's still be able to do and and i understand what he's saying too you know i want to see my my product run on something like this better than it would every be device audio. yeah Every screen. Yeah. Every screen. But he wants to see it. It's on another screen here, but he wants to see my product run better as if it's native. And that's the funny thing. Um, <clears throat> so for them to do this, I still say it needs to be a hybrid. It needs to be just like, uh, not just like the Switch, but one up the Switch. Um, it could be a let's think of it as an s in your hand and an x at the at the um, at the tv so when you when it's docked <coughs> it gets the extra extra power yeah it, it goes from you know, 200 
240 P to 480. <laughs> sure. Sure. Why not? Yeah. No, uh, but that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it would be nice to see that. And, and with the infinity fabric that they're using, they mm -hmm. could probably pull it off. Um, mm -hmm. Again, these guys are, if I'm, if I'm the, the guy that's out here thinking about this, I'm sure they've already had some genius thinking about this too. Now the, the, the question is the practicality, the money, um, we know this, you know, again, and this is where it falls back on, do they go with the lesser and compete with the switch or mm -hmm. the switch two or the switch HD? You heard it here first, uh, the, the super switch. Um, so is it going to be one of those uh, or um, is it going to go against the Legion? Is it going to go against steam? You know, um, and it makes sense to go against steam. Yeah. You know, yeah. money-wise, yeah, it's a little pricey, but that could be the next technology, you know, and it makes sense. It, this is the best way to play this. And he did say he wanted to bring Steam on here. He, he did. We will discuss that next. Uh, let, but before we do, let me get my two cents in here, right? Um, <clears throat> so I think when I'm out and about um, in an area with a lot of children, the children, when they're done running around, they'll sit down and they'll play one of two things, either their Switch or their phone. So they are, so I think it is good for Xbox to jump on this handheld um, trend because the children, you know, parents, you know, when they're in the back of their car and their kids are yelling or whatever, what do they give, you know, those kids, those young kids, what are parents giving them? They're giving them their Switches, they're giving them their, um, Tablets. Their tablets, their whatever. So I really think uh, to reach younger gamers, you got to get handheld. You got to get portable, right? We you, we are the dying class now. Yes, right? right. The demographic we are dying off, uh, <coughs> and they're not looking at us. The yeah, the next up and coming ones are huge, and that's you're right. That's that's the younger generation. Yeah, and once you give that kid that Xbox portable, this is what they're going to do with their. PlayStation Portal, they're just gonna drop it, <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> from Toy Story. Shout out to Twitter, man. They gave me the second week to put this up. So yeah, they're just gonna drop that old toy and pick up that new one. Um, I really think they need to get into this portable market uh, as fast as possible. Oh. Um, the, there... the longer they wait, the more people are gonna buy something that's not an Xbox. Don't let them uh, do that. Get into this portable market. Make them start buying that Xbox and enjoying their Xbox games and reaching a much much younger demographic than us older folks except for terry who's the youngest um you know um be sure to reach reach us <laughs> I, I didn't make the meme meme <laughs> but yeah the uh i really i have been looking forward to an xbox handheld if xbox comes out with a native portable not a cloud portable a native portable i'm buying it yeah so there we go. Let's see. Uh, so up next, as Dreadpool was saying, Phil Spencer wants Epic Game Stores and others on Xbox consoles. So to grow the console market, Xbox will need to be more like PC. And again, skipping all the, the stuff where they're talking. Yeah, we talked about GDC. Uh, Terry, take it away. Okay. So... Uh... Yes, said Spencer. Consider our history as the Windows company. Nobody would blink twice if I said, hey, when you're using a PC, you get to decide the type of experience you have by picking where to buy games. There's real value in that. Spencer believes console players would benefit from that freedom too, and so would console makers like Microsoft. Spencer explained how, in the past, console makers would typically subsidize the cost of expensive hardware knowing that a portion of every dollar spent on games for the platform over the years would eventually make it back to the console maker. Then, in time, the console maker would recoup the subsidy and hopefully more. But, Spencer said, Moore's Law has slowed down. The price of the components of a console aren't coming down as fast as they had in previous generations. Worse, he explained, the console market isn't growing with more gamers moving to PC and handheld options. 
Now the notion of subsidizing a console and forcing players to purchase games through the official storefront to help recoup costs might not make sense. The walls meant to lock people into consoles might be motivating them to stay out. Subsidizing hardware becomes more challenging in today's world, Spencer said. And I will say, and this may seem too altruistic, I don't know that it's growing the industry. So I think, what are the barriers? What are the things that create friction in today's world for creators and players? And how can we be part of opening up that model? The answer, in part, is scrapping exclusivity on more and more Xbox games. Spencer explained that the game experience is hindered when it matters what consoles we play on or what shops sell our games. As an example, he pointed to Sea of Thieves. A player, he explained, shouldn't have to worry about what hardware they or their friend own. They should just know if their friends have and want to play Sea of Thieves. Now, Spencer said, if I want to play on a gaming PC, then I feel like I'm more of a continuous part of a gaming ecosystem as a whole. As opposed to, on console, my gaming is kind of sharded to use a gaming term, based on these different closed ecosystems that I have to play across. Spencer's view sounds reasonable on paper. The console market is flat. The PC market's growing in part because it gives players a choice in where they buy games. So if consoles want to bring players back, they'll need to be more like PCs. And that means bringing down the walled gardens that, for decades, have protected the financial model of game consoles. Okay, so what do you think about your Xbox basically being now more of a Windows, a mini, uh, just being, just essentially being Windows? I mean, I feel like that was always the plan <laughs> for the last, for a good while now. They've been, you know, uh, even I had said that there's going to become a point where the consoles aren't going to be able to get any better without just turning it into a PC. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we're hitting that wall where they can't really exceed much more. Than, um, so, I mean, it makes sense. So. So you'd be okay if you could access, if you like, would you rather buy, buy games from let's pretend steam than you would Xbox? Steam has better deals. <laughs> so, uh, that's true. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, uh, if, <laughs> But again, and, uh, like I, Xbox games are, are optimized for Xbox. Steam games are just going to be brute forced. Some of them don't have great controller options. I mean, I don't care about that, but it would give me access to games that aren't on console that are only on PC. So now I can play those on my console, which is a win. And I get to take advantage of all the Steam sales, which is mm -hmm. a win. And I don't have to worry about upgrading my PC, you know, because my PC is getting outdated which is an all their win. So if I could play my PC games on my Xbox, I would rather do that. I, I would rather do that. Mm. So you think kids will start asking their parents for Xbox consoles instead of gaming PCs in the future? The, the kids that are already into PCs are going to stick to PC. Not I mean, future gonna, kids. It, it would depend on how well this works it out. Depends on yeah, the integration. I think a lot of the kids ask for PC because they are, um, what's the word I'm saying here? Uh, they want to do streaming as well, which again, Xbox can't start streaming very well. <laughs> Never get over stupid dreads playing with, playing with his stuff. <laughs> it's on a road now. Um, so you would be fine if Xbox opened up the the Xbox ecosystem, or I wouldn't say if it merged. I guess if it merged the Windows and Xbox ecosystem, allowing access to the Epic Game Store and the and the Steam Game Store, and for games on Steam to launch and games on Epic to to launch. Yeah, I mean we're already or, excuse me, we are already on that road because I mean they added EA Play to Xbox so you could go in and have the EA library of stuff. Mm -hmm. They have Ubisoft um, Connect on there now. So you you know, so they already have the PC kind of idea of having their individual stores there. So just mm -hmm. 
bring the major ones like you know like steam or epic just makes more sense because there's going to be a lot more people that buy games from those than like i don't know anybody who goes to ea play or to ubisoft connect to buy games so it just you know what i mean steam is going to be the is like the number one go-to yeah. um, for pc gaming so you know it just makes more sense and so many games already have controller support on steam it would be it would make an easy transition and steam has that uh forget what they call it, but they have that tv mode or whatever so it would be easy for them to integrate it to where it would work properly on an xbox do you, do you think this would be just throwing it out there you know like a lot of playstation games have ported over to steam if we get access to the steam store on xbox do you think we would be allowed to buy and launch uh you know a a game that hasn't been officially released on xbox licensed to be on xbox um i think at first you would but sony will lock that down <laughs> yeah i think they would lock it down but too sony would change the contracts for valve saying that they can't those games cannot be allowed in the library that is on an xbox and valve might just be able to tell them go f yourselves you know because they're valve <laughs> Yeah, well, just then like they told the Epic Game Store, you know, in which then Sony would probably just pull their game off of Steam altogether <laughs> because they're not going to want to do that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I see that happening. Uh, Dread, which I'm here for the drama. Dread, uh, so you were talking about bringing Epic Game Store and stuff to or Steam on your handheld. Take it away. So, um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it poses many problems, like you said, um, when it comes to that. Uh, first of all, a lot of gamers that are on PC, if they can buy an Xbox game through the Xbox store or through the Steam store, 100%, if not 110%, would buy it through Steam. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. They, Steam has such a good dedication that <clears throat> somehow they'll find another 10% to, that'll buy the games that way. Um, <laughs> versus through the Windows Store. I don't know what it is that they can't figure out. I mean, there was even rumors that Windows and Steam were going to... Uh, um, Windows was going to buy Steam. Uh, there was... Mm -hmm. uh, what was it, like three years ago, four years ago? Yeah. So who knows? Um, but I could see them teaming up. I can see that happening if, if they do it right. Um, and at the same time, I could also see where if you buy a steam game that they could do like uh, certain demographics um like they like they have now with regions that you can't play certain movies in a certain region you can't play certain videos in a certain region um and i i could assume that certain demographics would not be able to play on an xbox console mm -hmm. so i can see how they would figure out a way to fix that if sony had an issue or nintendo had an issue because Which they will they will yeah um 100%. and at the same time a lot of a lot of guys that are pc players uh mm -hmm. know how to hack things know how to do workarounds i could see i could see the xbox console being hacked more and more and more but it yeah yeah keep, depending keep going yeah depending on how they set it up uh but it would be a good meld and i know a lot of people don't like it i, I know a lot of people want xbox to stay xbox because if it would bring it in, Xbox is still going to make money, whether or not you buy the game. Um, and I can see if they do a play anywhere, if you buy it on Steam, mm -hmm. that they would still get like a bigger cut or something. I don't know. They 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 could even go for a lower cut. I mean, uh, look at um, one of the biggest games that sold. Of uh, outsold one of the bigger games in the brands right um final fantasy versus hell divers 70 yeah. versus 40. just saying I'm, i know it's not xbox but just showing you that the higher numbers don't always mean anything All right um disney did the same thing they they charged more and a lot of people left the platform but they're <clears> making <throat> more money because those that stayed on are making up for the difference and that's that's kind of the same scenario here. Depending on how they do it, they can still have the money there or they can have, <coughs> you know, and, and for something like this, you would think that they would want to negotiate a way to get more people to play versus because, you know, again, 
if you integrate somebody young enough to get used to these things, they will stick around. I could see a lot of like, I could see a lot of people moving over to the Steam version of Xbox games specifically because you don't need to pay for Xbox online anymore to get access to multiplayer. Like, if you're really going to make Xbox PC and PC like Xbox, if you're going to integrate them in such a way that they're they're more Windows-based than Xbox uh, software-based, you need to get rid of that Xbox online. You yeah. know, uh, nobody who buys an Xbox game on Steam needs to pay for online services. Well, they, they did get rid of it. It's called Game Pass. <laughs> well, there's Game Pass offline and Game Pass online mode. So they're, they're going to get rid of it. If you want it, you <laughs> don't have to whole pay for online it. paywall. And it, that's my on... thing. Yeah. Well, because if I... I buy a Steam game on an Xbox console and you want me to pay for online like pc gamers don't have to you know steam deck gamers don't have to i'm just gonna go buy a steam machine just saying if it's not the same experience as it is on pc or on the steam deck why would i buy it why would i buy your box so i could pay more for the for my steam library yeah does that make sense no it makes sense it makes perfect like, sense but if i'm gonna here's the other thing right <laughs> If I'm going to host a server for you to be able to play, shouldn't I get some money for that? If I have to pay for the electrical expenses? Uh, why are you hosting a server? When I connect to, like, on, on PC, when I connect, like, I'm, I'm just going to use Total War, right? Because I, I play Total War nothing but co-op online, right? When I bought Total War on Steam, I just bought the game, right? That's it. And the server I connected to was the Sega server. I paid for the game that gave me access to the Sega server. So I'm playing now. Right. So when you're saying you're hosting a server for me, wh which server are you t discussing the Sega server? Yeah. Uh, and again, I'm only playing devil's advocate because if it's this, if it's the steam version, right. I'm connected to, I'm assuming it's going to do things the steam way. Right. If I download discord to talk to my friends, am I connected to an Xbox server to talk to my friends or am I connected to discord? To talk to my friends oh you can still do that now on your xbox <laughs> yeah but if i turned off xbox online guess what i can't do so no you still can no the use xbox chat is integrated into discord but use there's no phone. like discord free app. Well, just use your phone yeah so there, there's ways around it that's what that's what pc players do but when the server shuts down you can't play that game unless they set it up that you can do it <clears throat> and host your own so outside of being power users little jimmy and timmy little young young and again this is all to target younger demographics mm -hmm. right uh because a lot of younger demographics are wishing for pcs instead of consoles now um younger demographics are going to go for this and they're not going to want and they're going to if if you offer them this but it's contingent on paying xbox ten dollars a month on top of the console you know some people some young people some young people's parents might have an issue with that so that's all i'm saying um do i think it's a good idea i'd be interested to see how it goes i think it would create a lot of drama and i'm here for it um and i don't know if i would immediately start buying my xbox games on steam because I do like the Xbox Play Anywhere thing. <laughs> but uh, if Xbox, the console, became part of Steam Play Anywhere, hey, I'm all here for it. All right, the last part of the, of the Polygon article is Phil Spencer on what the hell is happening in the game industry and why exclusive have become a risky business. Take it away, Terry. All right, the math on making a game has definitely changed, said Phil Spencer. Uh, Polygon spoke with Spencer during the annual Game Developers Conference, and though the conversation ranged from the possibility of a handheld console to the trouble with closed platforms, one theme was inescapable. What? I don't know what's right there because your name is covering it. <laughs> what the blank oh. is going on? <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, yeah. So what the hell is going on with the games industry? And how will video game makers and publishers... Xbox included, get out of it. 
Spencer's views point to a co collision of rising budgets, diversifying business models, and the exceptional financial <laughs> risk now required to meet the audience expectations of a triple A release. He specifically pointed to the astronomical budgets of big budget games, which have created a knot of problems that has been a challenge to disentangle. And for Spencer, the path forward is to abandon assumptions about exclusivity and attract new. Sorry. Customers who have cooled on the console experience. But first, for context, Spencer talked about how things used to work when budgeting and greenlighting a video game. The Microsoft exec has been producing games for long enough that he can remember when the financials were relatively straightforward. A publisher could set a sales goal, let's say 800,000 units, set an earnout goal, how much money they want to make, and set the price of the game, usually $60. From there, a video game publisher and or studio could set a budget. However, the financial calculus has changed. <coughs> In 2024, most games are sold across multiple storefronts, often steeply discounted mere weeks after release, or included as part of a subscription service on launch day. Plus, the games themselves take many years to create with the help of hundreds if not thousands of team members, sometimes spread across the world. All of this adds up, and as Spencer says, it can cost $300 million to build a video game. Spencer explained how this cost forces three substantial problems. One for all big budget games, one unique to console exclusives, and one that spans the entire industry. The cost really reduces the risk that publishers are willing to take. Where previous games need to sell a few hundred thousand units to justify their cost, new games may need to sell many millions of units. If you're a publisher, you know that's a pretty big number in a world that already has a lot of video games coming, said mm -hmm. Spencer. Mm -hmm. How are you going to establish this thing? I'm willing to take. Hold on, hold uh, on. There. Am I willing to take the red on a new IP <coughs> on a new kind of game when the earnout risk is that high? I think it impinges on the creativity of this industry, which I don't love. Creativity is like the cornerstone of what we should be about in gaming. This cost is particularly. Uh, number two. Number two. Number two. This cost is particularly prohibitive for <coughs> exclusives that can only reach so many players. As Spencer explained in our conversation about the perils of exclusivity in walled garden consoles, these games need to make additional money to justify the console maker subsidizing the cost of the console. As Spencer explained, the case for exclusivity gets pressured as the cost of the game goes up. Three. According to Spencer, the console market has not grown in the past year. Though Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo Switch consoles continue to sell, Spencer notes that many console gamers are simply upgrading, or to put it another way, they're not new to the market and won't contribute to growth. Mm, mm. And without new customers, everybody else's customer is your success state, said Spencer. You can't succeed unless you draw in customers from other publishers and other platforms. And because you're not finding new customers with the games that you're building, everybody's kind of fighting over the same size pie. All right. Let's, let's get enough reading right there. Let's get into it. All right. So the gaming industry is changing and basically being held to one platform uh, just isn't profitable anymore. Not making money. So... The console business isn't growing. People aren't buying. They're not getting new Xbox customers. Probably not enough new uh, accounts are being made. They're just getting people that are upgrading from their Xbox One to their Xbox Series consoles. Um, and so they're not growing. But game cost is going up. You know, cost the cost of developers is going up. Um, the expectation of video games like uh, like Fastback put on here. Is going up. Yep. Thanks to Axel wanting every game to be 60 FPS. The cost of development has risen. Yep. Yeah. Stuff like that. Um, prices go up and it doesn't help that 
Seventy dollars didn't help. I mainly play in Game Pass and wait for the sale. I can't tell you how many games I wait on sale now that they're seventy dollars. I think they that was an industry mistake. They should have kept it at sixty. <clears throat> should get especially because games now. Even if I buy a seventy dollar game, I, there's still microtransactions in the game, so you're still making money. <clears throat> so. They haven't given them done themselves any favor in the industry, in my opinion, to to contribute to growth. You know, raising the price of games. Um, as Terry said, the sales are way better on Steam than they are on consoles. So for those of us waiting for sales, we'll always look that hey, why would I buy it there? Why am I going to get an Xbox where games are more expensive, even when they're on sale, than they are on Steam? Steam gives me better deals. I'm going to go PC, right? So they there's a lot that's going into this that's driving it that's making xbox start putting their games on steam on pc right start putting their games on ps5 stuff of that nature so thing the market is changing and xbox is trying to change with it to stay relevant pot and you know they are part of a uh of a corporation that is publicly traded and investors hate see, seeing stagnation but most and even worse shrinkage so you got to keep growing so how do you grow you go multi-plat so you can keep showing that you're growing bringing the games to you where you game do you think this is a smart move for xbox terry to stay uh, to stay alive yes because the consoles are dying on their own you know mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. they've already pointed out multiple times that the younger generation are mostly playing mobile and then they're also moving over to PC. Absolutely. So the console space is dying. Um, so it makes sense they have to they have to do something else to to to, to stay within the market in one, in one way or another. Whether they, you know, go with the cloud route and they just have an Xbox app on all the devices, so you can still be within their ecosystem without having to buy an actual console, or they, you know or they bring other platforms over to them, <laughs> you know? So uh, something definitely has to give. So, you know, they're playing around with different ideas to see what kind of sticks. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but yeah, I, I think it's, you know, they have no choice because like I mentioned earlier, as we continue to upgrade consoles, you know, they're getting closer and closer to PC capability. And it's going to get to the point to where it won't make sense to be doing consoles because you're just going to be downgrading at that point to have a console when it, you know, it won't make sense. Cause it's going to get to the point to where you're just going to buy a PC because a console won't be good enough anymore. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with everything you just stated there, Terry, uh, Dreadpool, you and I, we might be riding the ambulance all the way home when, mm -hmm. uh, when console gaming dies, as it has been part of our life since we were young. It has we're gonna been. Be, we're going to be in the ambulance. No, you will be, but I'll be driving it for you. <laughs> so, <All right>. um, <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> you know, you know, it's funny though. All those questions you asked earlier. Which ones? There's your answers. <laughs> your 60 frames. Your, you know handheld all that stuff was answered right there everything that you said earlier that today was all answered by phil right there so you <laughs> that know, it's we'll... expensive to do 60 frames yeah, <laughs> yeah and i said i don't care <laughs> you don't care you promised me 60 frames he also promised you, did, you, you didn't VR. promise me we're gonna do 60 frames asterisk depending on cost that was i didn't see that in the video did you <laughs> well you, you also promised you vr you know, there was people crying about that because he took yeah. it away. Um, so, but yeah, it's, I, I think it'll be fine. I mean, if, if there's really a problem with, with what they're doing, you know, just go out and buy yourself a, a gummy, you know, a little controller gummy and just have your own real life experience of, you know, thousand frames a second, however fast your eyeballs can see. You know, just call it that and say, you know, we won up to Xbox. But that's the thing, though, right? It doesn't matter if you have a gummy. It doesn't matter if you know, what console you're on. Um, if 
people aren't aren't there to buy you're not you're not going to succeed and that's that's the thing that's where it's game pass has been helpful for those that can't afford it and at the same time has also changed the industry because if you think about it we're not buying games as much but at the same time we have to think about what games we buy and game pass allows us to buy certain games that we normally wouldn't have been able to afford because there's a lot of games coming out than than previous years before in our generation and at the same time there are a lot more money so buying a hundred dollar secret of mana back in 1990 is different it would be like one of two games you bought that whole year right but it would you know again we played these games over and over we, we didn't sit there and play them and, and how many times you've played super mario right we didn't sit there and play them and say okay i beat the game i'm done no you went back and you, you went played back again, and yeah. played these and you went back again right now a lot of people speed run these games and as soon like, as it comes next? out, what's the next game? What's the next game? You know, it's a yep. one and done. And I know some people are like, well, I still play this game again. And it's like, I don't care if you still play the game again. It's just the fact that most people, because there's so much out there, are, are spending money to play in the game and then they move on to the next one. It, it, it's it's uh, keeping up with the Joneses, basically. You know, oh, I played yeah. more games than you did. I did this more than you did. Did you really enjoy the game? Did you even play the game or are you just playing Twitter games? You know, we don't know. And and that's yeah I um, do know, you know but I, I think how, how many times thing. I've heard uh, you know and, Sean, and this is not really a diss to these guys this is just to prove Dreadpool's point uh, you know I remember hearing other podcasts of uh, Randall Thor and Colt Eastwood both saying that they're just they have nothing to play because they finished playing everything that's come out and they're just waiting on the next thing you know they they don't hit uh, I don't know if those guys even have a backlog. They go through so many games so fast. Uh, but yeah, to prove uh, Dreadpool's point, that's today's generation. Yeah. And, and, and those and, guys are proof of it. And understandably, when when you're in the media <coughs> like that, you know, because they are trying to report on games, they have to, yeah. hurt, you know, and you want to be able to finish the game to give a better report. But at the same time, back mm -hmm. in those, back in the day, you know, 30, 10, 10, 20 years ago, right? Yeah, Re reviewers never completed the game because they were on a timeline. So they played enough to know. So they played a couple hours to get into it and know what the game is about. You don't have to finish the game to know what the game is about. You don't have to finish mm -hmm. the game to know what the controls are like. OK, yes, you'll know the story 100 percent. But you you don't need to know that to get somebody to understand what the game is about. That's why a lot of the stuff now is is all media bias, you know. Mm -hmm. So they're they're playing the game to get it out there back in those days because you had a month before the next magazine came out, and then mm -hmm. when when the online mags came out, they had more time to do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, it was like mm -hmm. hurry up and get to the next one, right? Nowadays, everybody's just blasting through these games seven hour games um and then what's the next one i have nothing else to play i it's it's almost like a junkie you know and and that's we're we're, we're gaming junkies i guess you could say that we enjoy yeah, the it's games our, it's, our, it's our hobby of choice it's our it's our drug of choice right yeah and, but like i said earlier final fantasy versus hell divers forty dollars versus the seventy dollars <laughs> which one do you think sold more Hell divers at forty bucks sold yeah. more. Yeah, you so know, that seventy dollar price point really hurts. I, I think, you know, um, like RWK right here said, only full price game I buy is Resident Evil, and that's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's he's a hardcore fan. You mm -hmm. know, certain games like I was gonna buy all, all, uh, Alone in the Dark, and then once I heard all the negative stuff about it, I was like, all right, I'll wait, and hopefully maybe they'll fix it. By the time we get it, because I was so hyped for it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what's his name? Harbor. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm a fan of 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 his movies, mm -hmm. and and for him to be in a game, I was like, oh man, this Stranger Things cool. actor, yeah, yeah, Silent. Uh, what was it? Um, was it Silent? It wasn't Silent Night. It was the yeah, Violent uh, Night. Violent Night. Yeah. Yeah. Just love him. Oh, love that him. was that was a great one. Ugh. But again, but back to back to the topic. Yeah. <laughs> that's but you know I would have bought that at full price, 
But once it came out, and I'm glad I didn't pre-order it, but once it came out, I was like, oh, let's hold off on that one. You know, but I, ha I have to figure out what I'm going to spend my money on. Mm -hmm. I've got Game Pass. Um, I didn't know that Callista Protocol uh, dropped their, their expansion and, you know, and everything. So <laughs> thanks to RWK, I went ahead and bought the rest of the, the season pass. It included every little detail. Mm -hmm. I haven't even finished the game. But at the price, I was like, you know what? Let's just do this um, because I, I, I did like the game. I just I had some issues with it. A lot of it was the glitches, not the, well, basically game breaking, uh, going back out to the Xbox screen. So mm. when, when you're playing a game and you can't get past it after months and probably like 12 to 13 updates and you finally get past it, I've lost interest. Yeah, I wanted I wanted access to all that stuff, so I went ahead and spent my money. Why? Because Game Pass helped me save my money to 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 make those choices. You know, otherwise, I'm not spending that kind of money. It was just a choice that I made, and that's that's part of the thing is you have to figure out money wise where you're going to put it. And I'm also the one buying games for Tiny Giant, so mm -hmm. I have to buy for three people. I have to figure out. You know which which one I can do, and on top of that, Game Pass only works with two Xboxes. I've got three people, so some somebody I got to buy a game for that's not going to be able to access the, yeah. the game. So I'm buying Until family game. plan comes through or something. Right, right. I'm I'm waiting on that. I was hoping that it would have mm -hmm. come out last year, but uh, maybe this year. Maybe this year's maybe. the charm. But that would also yeah allow me to buy more. So yeah, uh, so. Phil Spencer, that was the Phil Spencer interview, and I'm so sad that we didn't do this live last week, so I needed to cover it, um, you know, because, uh, you know, and the thing with the Xbox is at least Xbox is clear on their future that they're going to bring you, so you can either jump on or jump off if you don't like it, right? If you do like it, you can jump on and join the fun. If you don't like it, you can jump off, I guess. Um, could they always do better? Of course they could always do better, but is it enough to get you to get you to um go away i guess that's your own personal thing right um so yeah uh let's see uh game pass is the best value in gaming for me and never run out of things yeah uh console gaming isn't dying just ha having to evolve with cloud all digital mobile taking over gaming market absolutely it absolutely has to evolve evolve uh, fastback. I don't know the answer to your question. I, Gamers have to evolve too. That's the problem. Yeah. A lot of them are crying, screaming. Well, older gamers have to evolve. Young gamers are just going to be like, "Oh, finally!" You know? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's it's two different worlds. All right. So, yeah, man. So uh, Phil Spencer Longcast as Xbox Savior may be remembered as the man who killed it. So he's going to use the uh, the polygon piece here. To talk about it, right? So Phil Spencer said, without your new customer, Phil Spencer, everybody else's customer is your success date. You can't succeed unless you're drawing customers from other publishers and other platforms. And because you're not finding new customers with gay with the games that you're building, everybody's kind of fighting over the same size pie. Um, of course, we read all this. We're going to skip everything on that we read. Now, look, Spencer's right to a degree. If this were coming from a punter rank and file, okay, I guess I have to read it. So he talks about how everybody else is your customer. Uh, when an industry that is projected to be smaller the next year in terms of players and dollars, and you get a lot of publicity for traded companies, uh, as it going to grow the side of the business, then it gets scrutinized to the cost side. Basically, Phil Spencer, you know, saying that he it's expensive, right? Mm -hmm. And shout out to you, RWKD. Thank you so much for joining us. You're the real MVP. Have a good day. He says, now look, Spencer is right to a degree. And if this were coming from a punter rank and file developer from a random game studio or modestly, modestly successful newsletter, such as Poly such as Video Games Chronicles, idiot, such as Video Games Chronicle, it would be fair to comment. But Phil, mate, I'm sorry to have to point this out to you, but you're the head of Xbox. I'm not sure you get to pin all this on the macroeconomics, this and that, you know. You, you have had, I think it's fair to say, a degree of agency in all this. Indeed, there are maybe half a dozen people with the power to actually change the shape of the game industry. And for the last 10 years, you have been one of them. 
I do not see much point in dwelling on how we got here because I think it's quite obvious to us all what went wrong. In other words, he probably doesn't have any good points. All of Spencer's big bets, the pivot to subscriptions, variable hardware SKUs, and the spending spree of studio acquisitions were contingent on Xbox not just being, to borrow the Xbox tagline, the best place to play, but to the best play to play the best games. If there's one lesson we can take from Spencer's era is that you can enact all the disruptive change you like, but you cannot disprove the industries or this truth. Great games sell consoles. A hundred billion dollars later, Xbox still doesn't have them. If anything, I would argue its first party output has gotten worse since the shopping spree began and its struggles are as such no surprise at all. Spencer spent part of his Polygon interview musing early about a dedicated Xbox handheld, which I'm sure seems like a no-brainer in a world where Steam Deck exists, but I, ma I imagine it will be an alarming prospect for the development community that is slowly caught cottoning onto that fact that making it games for Xbox is too much of a faff given the tepid rewards on effort. Uh, he talks about how uh, J.I. Biss Chris, Chris Dream talked about how a developer said that they didn't know why they made stuff for Xbox when all their console, when all their gamers were on PC and PlayStation. Now that all of his big bets have failed, Spencer is turning to corrective measures, short-term fixes that might juice the numbers in the next couple of, uh, what, what is this, uh, profits and loss, but seems destined to further weaken the Xbox ecosystem down the line. Bringing the likes of the Epic Games Store to NHIL to Xbox consoles will confuse the value proposition, give users more ways to give money to people that aren't Microsoft, and do nothing to transform Xbox's future. I will... I would love to have my H library on a console, but don't get me wrong. If Spencer thinks that that's going to move the needle in any meaningful way, then I have some magic beans to sell him. If he thinks that there's a two-way two, two -way street, street, the first step of a journey that ends with Game Pass on PS5, Switch, and Steam, then he has truly lost the plot. Uh, taking former exclusive to rival platforms is just more short-term thinking. Sure, it may pump the numbers a bit, but each new port is one less reason for a potential new customer to buy an Xbox. Uh, let us assume charitably that Sea of Thieves sells 5 million copies at $40 a pop when it launches on PS5 next month. Let us let us even more charitably pretend that it means $200, $200 million in revenue for Microsoft, ignoring the distribution and marketing, Sony's platform cut, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> Last quarter, $200 million would have increased Microsoft's revenue by about 0.3. For one product? That's pretty good for one product on a true three trillion dollar company but okay 0.3 percent guy <clears throat> that's merely merely a rounding error for a company that's of that size yeah and where does the health of its gaming division is concerned is little more than a sticking plaster to be clear i feel bad for spencer he seems a decent short sort i think he's coming in into this with the best of intentions in a parallel universe where every horse he backed romped home, he would be credited with transforming and perhaps even saving the game industry, saving the game industry. And another where he instead spending seventy billion on Activision Blizzard, he spent two hundred and thirty. He spent it on two hundred and thirty odd games with the same budget as Spider Man Two. Perhaps Xbox is flying. Wow, jeez. Okay, but in our world, he has spent ten years and a gigantic amount of of money taking Xbox from third place to third place. And that is not the market's fault. If the writing isn't on the wall for Xbox as a whole, then it certainly could be for him. All right. I'm going to start because I have some 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 things to say here. And so he basically turns down Phil Spencer and what he's been doing, saying that, you know, they spent 10, they spent billions of dollars Buying gate, buying all these publishers, and what is it shown shown for yet? And he says that the games that since they started buying these publishers, that the games are actually worse. I don't think that's true. Psychonauts came out better because they bought them, and it turned out to be a game of the year contender. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yep. Um, you know, the Outer Worlds came out. That was. That a was, fantastic yeah. RPG that has now led into Avowed being greenlit. Of course, that's fantastic. Uh, 
Ninja Theory is now becoming the first going to put out the best looking game of all time. And it could very well be a console seller uh, with Senoa's Sacrifice. Or, sorry, not say, uh, with uh, Senoa's Saga, Hellblade 2. Um, we haven't seen Call, you know, we haven't seen Call of Duty affect anything with Xbox marketing yet, as the marketing will probably return to Xbox. I don't see Xbox not advertising that, hey, get it on Game Pass, play it free on Game Pass. Game Pass, Game Pass, Game Pass. Right? Uh, ever since Game Pass came in, more gamers have played more games that they never would have tried and bought more games. There is no way that Game Pass has had a negative effect on, on us as consumers or on the publishers or on Xbox. You know, it is the number one subscription service in the world. And guess what? Everybody copied it. Everybody copied it. Right? So... <clears throat> So this guy's like downplaying, downplaying the fact that Game Pass is the disruptor that it really is. He's downplaying the fact that oh, hey, you know, Microsoft spent ten billion less than a year ago. Where, where are the results? The Phil Spencer straight said it takes five years to even start seeing those results, and you're about to see some with Ninja Theory. So, you know, play. Uh, Phil Spencer didn't say that. Hey, you know. We'll see results in five minutes. Phil Spencer never said that. And then to say that, oh, hey, you know, we're going to make the Xbox ecosystem into a handheld where young kids are. This guy's opinions are just not backed up by facts. And he's over there like, oh, you know, Sea of Thieves made $200 million. That's 0.3% of, of the money that a company like Microsoft will make. Yeah, for one product to make you two hundred million, you have no idea how hard it is to sell a product. Like, no idea how hard it is. So, if you're making two hundred million, like you know, let's pretend half of that off of one product. That's that's damn good, especially a product that's when, when did see thieves launch in 2016, 2017? A six to eight year old product. Let's just say seven year old product. That's When's the last time someone made 200 million off of a seven year old product? <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't happen, right? Especially in gaming. This guy is delusional beyond delusional. This guy, Nathan Brown. Bro, retire. Your takes are trash. <laughs> um, I think your your every point you have. And the, the way you said that Phil Spencer is killing the gaming industry instead of being the saver of Xbox, fi decisions Phil Spencer has made, out of all the decisions he's made, there has only been one I disagree with. And that was porting Sea of Thieves to, to PlayStation. But I'm not going to argue with the economics of it because I know that's a losing argument. It's just me being an old guy that thinks that it shouldn't have been ported over there. But he thinks that making the Xbox, opening the ecosystem and making the Xbox the place to play because, hey, you get access to your Steam library. Hey, you got a handheld. You get it. You can play this way. You can play that way. Every screen is an Xbox goal is somehow kill, going to kill the branding of Xbox, which, again, only one decision that I think of so far has led to that. But other than that, I think it's been great. Uh Terry, what do you think? Do you think this guy has any has made made any valid points? Um, I missed part of the article, but uh, I feel I don't, I don't know. I feel like I don't know how old this writer is. He might be our generation, <laughs> so yeah. So I feel I feel like he's looking at it through a lens like we tend to all kind of look through things through our own generational lens um and yeah he's not looking at the big picture looking forward for what's best for for gaming uh and yeah uh <laughs> the 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 younger market is the market the business has to focus on so <clears throat> i don't know i i feel like this guy is just 
what he's saying is valid, but at the same time, like I said, he's looking at it through a lens, <laughs> and mm. the the lens isn't necessarily accurate. Yeah, the lens is is not accurate at all. Dread thoughts. Well, let's see here. Um, <laughs> his most accurate point was the period. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, because a lot of the stuff he was saying was basically, you know, I'm volcanoing around the, the mountain while it's volcano. I'm driving over the mountain while it's volcanoing. I mean, th doesn't it sound like somebody else we know that? Yeah. It's yeah. just just going around in circles like this. This is all he's doing. Mm -hmm. um, I understand being an old man gamer. You want to be, you know, get off my lawn and this and this and that. But to take it out on somebody that. You got you to gotta remember, I've, I've used this analogy many times before. It takes miles to turn an aircraft carrier around, right? And, and, and a company mm -hmm. like Microsoft is pretty much like the U.S. Navy, right? And this aircraft carrier is Xbox, and it's going to take miles to turn around. Phil Spencer came in, uh, and remember 2013, Xbox was going to be sold. It, they were going to sell it, mm -hmm. even though they put out a console. Uh, they found out that they're mixed messaging because the executives couldn't keep track of what they were saying. They weren't on the same page, you know, all this stuff. And Phil took that around from almost being sold to fixing this, fixing that. Fixing Xbox is not more items. valuable than Windows. Correct. Correct. Which is on every PC. And every PC is technically an Xbox then. Um, but actually those want to hear that part. Um, anyway, <laughs> we could go into that again. Right. Um, but that's the thing. Xbox being on PC doesn't bother me. Xbox is PC. PC is Xbox. So yeah. 60 frames, 30 frames, whatever. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so in this, in this aspect, if you think about it, he it's, this isn't even an opinion. This is someone that's misguided he you know this is when somebody hates somebody so bad that they sit there and formulate bad information they are practicing deceptive practices right they're putting that stuff out there this is not truthful um i understand it's his opinion but his opinion is wrong this time you're not entitled to this opinion because it is not an educated um, opinion that is the problem you know if it was educated you could say okay because of this i don't feel this way but the problem is he's just making stuff up you know and it you know like i said it takes years to turn around where are we at now oh they just bought activision right it took how many years for that that they had to put everything else on hold to make sure they had all their p's and q's in line because if anything happened it could affect this whole thing and they would have to lose all that money right Bethesda, that was a purchase, right? That apparently that was a bad purchase too, because you know, all these games are still going to be honored and and you know under their contracts and go out to PlayStation. For now, right? But they came back to Xbox too, right? Yep. So they just honored, you know. And, and it's <laughs> funny how people do the honorable thing that they don't have to do. They don't. They didn't have to do. They could have said, you know what, we own them now. We're not going to put it out there. They yeah. could have done that, but they honored the contracts. Mm -hmm. They weren't going to force and, and and do any of that. And then on top of that, with the the, the testing, and I understand Axel's point of it. Um, not really a fan of it, but I can understand why. Right? I, that's that's kind of the thing too. I'm not saying I'm a fan that these four games went out there, but I understand why they went out there, and I also understand the optics that. If these four games can, can go there to the competitors, what's to say that the main franchises, Gear 6 is coming out, right? Mm. Is that going to go to the other competitor too? It better not. But he also, Phil also said certain games will never go anywhere because that would ruin the brand. And, and those games, they didn't feel like would ruin the brand, but expand the brand's popularity because if you still have to log into xbox to play sea of thieves 
no matter where you're playing it, Xbox is still there. Yeah. So, as long as you, you know, have to do an Xbox account, yeah. Yeah, you have to do an Xbox account to play it. You just like you do on Minecraft. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, um go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so I was gonna say, so there's that correlation that's coming back, even though they're not getting it directly and you're playing it at the competitor, you're still buying it, they're still making money. Yes, the competitor is making money too. Um, but they did the same thing with Apple. They they bailed Apple, not Xbox, but Microsoft bailed mm -hmm. Apple from from basically bankruptcy, you know. So mm -hmm. they were dying and they fixed it so that way they had competition. Because if if they're gonna, you know, doing this also helps them figure out. Think about this. Pentiment, right? Yeah. Did good on Xbox. Yeah. But how many people actually bought it versus played it on Game Pass? Think about that. Now they have a number, they have a metric on two other platforms to see how well it was actually liked if people are willing to pay for this right same thing with hi-fi rush are they willing to pay for this that they, they do not have access to play for free we know the numbers of people wanting to jump in and play mm -hmm. we know the numbers on our side because it's going to be skewed if you think about it some people would buy it even though they had access to it mm -hmm. right but not everybody that had access to it bought it. So those numbers will be skewed on the on the low side. Now, going to PlayStation and Nintendo, you're going to have a, a real relation on how popular this, this title is and how much people are willing to pay for it. Now you have a better metric on this, and you made some money. So yeah. this guy's opinions, you can already tell, are just flabbergasted they're made up um he's just doing this um to just to get that attention and, and i don't think he's doing the old the old man get off my lawn thing i don't think he's doing any of this stuff he's just doing it because of whatever reason he could be one of those guys that just again stuck on the i hate microsoft because microsoft is a bad company and xbox is just part of that company yeah some people are still on that uh, Xbox is bad because of this. Oh, wait, you want to play on offline? Get get a 360, right? Some people are still on that three, uh, uh, the 2013 mentality mm. of, mm. of that. We still get that, right? Uh, what can you do? You can't educate these people. Some of these people are just so bullheaded in their thought patterns and don't want to do anything. And anything good for, for Xbox is a bad thing for gaming why why is it like that i don't know probably because when you go into game uh what was it gamestop wearing an xbox shirt oh did you want this for playstation because i don't see your pre-order here yeah because it was on everything xbox. that everybody ridiculed xbox for in 2013 is the norm now yeah they, no one has issued an apology no one a retraction or apology or said that xbox is right sony did the same thing with the 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 the, 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 the playstation i or the, whatever the camera that they had they did the same yeah. thing but because of the backlash they took it off unfortunately the leaders at xbox at that time weren't smart enough to say you know what we retract this and we will give you the option to have it without the connect mm -hmm. yeah and connect would have been still here yeah it'd be on the four or five by now <coughs> yeah saying. which i would have loved oh i would have loved it too yeah let's check in with the chat here uh so fastback has been typing he says playstations may be first but they are still struggling and just fired jim ryan they are struggling yeah because everything phil spencer well, said is true it's just that xbox is on. pivoting jim ryan retired yeah xbox is down in place to release more first party games a year starting last year because of zeny max and other acquisitions yeah. Now with Activision acquired, it will just get better. Absolutely, yeah. And 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 don't forget, PlayStation is going to release less games. Mm -hmm. And uh, was it? Uh, it's one of those Colin <clears throat> said, "I'd rather have less games." Yeah. Right. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Before it wasn't. It was. It, Xbox had less games, and it wasn't good enough. Now it's good enough for the other side. So again, brilliant people, genius. 
people doing Genius. this. Yep. Uh, Nintendo has had great success with first party and Switch, but have been slow lately. Yeah, which is why they're looking at launching the, the next console. Were PlayStation um, first party games besides Insomniac at four at four years this gen? Yeah, yeah. Hard facts. It's the remake station. Yeah, 2025 March is uh, the Nintendo HD. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's the remake again. station, and I know that because I bought a PS5 for for exclusives and Final Fantasy, and I own like three games on it. <laughs> yeah. Colin Moron Farty, less is more. <laughs> yeah. Lower Moron Farty. Uh, I'm getting two cents common sense from Dreadpool and Cool Cat Terry this morning. Axel, one cent. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, that for all right, so, uh, where did it go? Here it is. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Let's move on to our last topic of the day. Something that was reported on two days ago, maybe. Sarah Bond has, Xbox president Sarah Bond has set up a new team dedicated to game preservation and forward compatibility. Uh, so, in the so this is uh, from Windows Central. They say in the emails they got some emails, and they got confirmed. In the emails, Sarah, Sarah Bond reiterated Microsoft's plan to build new Xbox hardware, focused on delivering the biggest technical leap ever in a generation. Now, what technical can mean? Is up to interpretation. Uh, let's start with that. Da, 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 the complexity. All right, so here it is. It's been nearly six months since we came together. Uh, this is since the uh, Activision Blizzard King acquisition. <coughs> it's been six months since we came together as an organization. Our collective achievements in that time frame are tremendous. Everyone should feel incredibly proud of what we've achieved and excited about the opportunities ahead, Sarah said. We're moving full speed ahead on our next generation hardware and focus on delivering the biggest technological leap ever in a generation. <clears throat> she touched up on AI, saying we are innovating in gaming AI focused on delivering player first, developer first value for discovery engagement and creative velocity. So <clears throat> Sarah talked about her, um, the biggest technical leap ever in a console. Um, are you excited for next gen? Cause we, we've heard rumors that next gen could start as early as 2026 on Xbox team Xbox. Terry, are you ready? I guess I have no choice not to get ready. Are you excited? Oh, I mean, I'm always excited for what's to come, but I mean, I'm not ready to buy another console. Are you going to hold off on buying the Xbox Next? I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> I mean, when the next console comes, I'll get it. It's just right now, I just, it's not something I want to be investing in right now. Okay. Uh, Drip, are you excited for the for the biggest technological leap ever in a generation. I am, and it's the handheld, which I told you about, which is going to be the Xbox XP. Get, you, you see where I'm yeah, going I see there? what you're saying. I see what, I see what you and, did right and, there. And here it is. This is going to be the end of the PlayStation. Oh, my God. That's it. The we end. Destroyed it. We called it. <laughs> awesome. So, so X Xbox is going to eat the the next generation just like Dreadpool just ate the PlayStation. <laughs> so now remember, she's talking about the biggest generational leap. I think the PS Five Pro got announced at something like thirty teraflops, thirty three teraflops. So Xbox is gonna have to do something to get above that 30 mark. Yeah. That's uh that's that's gonna be something something uh interesting. It has to be. It has to be something I just, interesting. I like my moniker of XP because that means it's gonna be an at least a handheld X portable. So mm. if, if if it's the handheld, 
that's going to be awesome. But the next generation is totally different from what the handheld was. Mm -hmm. So the handheld, I think, is going to be the next couple of years. And the next generation, if you're looking at 33, we are, we're looking at... In two years, maybe 50? No. No, we're looking at probably 70 to 80. In two years? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Because you look at where the GPUs are right now, and you got to remember, 90s, yeah, you got to remember, uh, we're going to be using a lot more AI. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be a lot more tools that are going to be automated. Um, there's they still have machine learning in there, so the, the, I'm sure they're going to have a higher, deeper level of um, AI. I see there, there you go, right at the bottom. Mm -hmm. We are innovating in gaming AI, focused for delivering first. Uh, we keep moving the screen on me. First player development, first value of, for discovery, engagement, creative velocity. So if you think about it, they're they're going to do a lot. And with the, the technology that they have already in there and expanding on it, expanding on um, ray tracing, all this other stuff that they have, the tools. Again, adding all of that just means the box needs to get bigger. Mm -hmm. But you still... I have only this much space <laughs> so you have to figure that out but that's part of the, the whole thing with the tool so yeah uh it could it could be that powerful to to do like i said 75 80 maybe more uh, because these jumps are huge jumps when you mm -hmm. look at the teraflops from generation to generation and there are the pro the ps5 pro is on par with that jump from um where it was last gen where we did the refreshes so that's why i'm saying yeah, it's it going to be at more, least more graphically powerful yeah yeah it's about the same yeah yeah um so the the gaming ai and stuff that's actually part of the back compat team so basically they're they are innovating in gaming ai focused and all this stuff so they're that's nice that they're still focused on back compat so all your xbox series uh, you know, so right now you have four generations in one box. The next generation, you're going to have five generations in one box, access to five generations of games. And I think that is fantastic. Again, I think the back compat is one of the best reasons to own an Xbox. Uh, are you happy that Sarah Bond is still putting uh, back compat on the priority list, Terry? Yes, it's still a good feature. <clears throat> yes, not a lot of people use it, but it's better to keep it for people who do. You know what I mean? Because it's... There are people who come into generations very late. So if they're able to then still, you know, keep playing the older games on the newer generation, that's a good thing. Um, yeah. Especially with backlogs as big as they are. Sometimes you might not get to a game until the next generation. Uh, too. <laughs> so it's good to still have the, abil the, the ability to go back and play those games. Because, like, I mean, I'm still playing. Every now and then I'll pull up a 360 game I never played before and I'll go play it, <laughs> you know? So... Uh, so I'm grateful to have that ability to do that because backlogs are huge. <laughs> you know, yeah, we have, yeah. you know, we have hundreds of games coming out every year. There's no way to keep up. So we need to be able to go back and play old stuff. Yeah. I play a game called Ikaruga. I played it on my Sega Saturn. So go back that many generations and it got re re it got a port on Xbox Live Arcade, bought it, and I've loaded up constantly. Constantly load up Ikaruga. I love that game. And I love the fact that I can load it up on my newest hardware. I can just see it and be like, I feel like playing it. I don't have to come to my Saturn, get my jewel case out, open it up, throw it into Japanese mode, all that crap. You know, I can just load it up. It's really nice. Uh, so, yeah, and as Dreadpool put out, you know, all that AI stuff that they're putting in, it's not just for back compat. It's definitely going to be for next-gen graphics and all that good stuff. So maybe a lot of these games that aren't 60 right now are going to get 60 on the next generation thanks to AI. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah but then when you get 60 next gen, then everyone's going to be crying that it's not 120. You, they can't win. Uh, yeah, you know, that's, I'm, I'm going to be – the more frames, the better, but I'm going to be happy when 60 becomes the standard, as it should have already this generation. You know, and here, here just – when I said with the 80, I, I misspoke. It should have been more like 100 and something um teraflops um mm. it's one 1.84 teraflops for the ps4 the 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 pro jumped up to 4.2 right yeah, so that times right 
Mm -hmm. The base Xbox slash S uh, for the Xbox One is uh, 1.4 teraflops. The One X is six teraflops. Four times. All right. So three to four times is what we're looking at. But now you go from the base to base, right? 1.84 to 10.3 on the PS4. Ten times. Right. It's like eight, but yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's close. Yeah. And then um, one point four to twelve on a Series X. Yeah, about eight, eight and a half, between eight and nine times. Yeah. Right. So if we do it, we if we do it off of the Xbox One, it's two times because the Xbox One X is six, to the Xbox Series X is twelve, so it's double. So if, again, we're still stuck in that three to four times range yada, 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 <coughs> for each jump, or. 8 to 10 for start of generation to start of generation. Yeah, so yeah, we're going to be closer to 100 teraflops. So yeah, we're going to be closer to 100, maybe more. Which and that's going to be fantastic. So yeah, so you... And, and hopefully that. we'll be closer to 60 frames. <laughs> Again, with everything that they do, the more power that they put, the more stuff that the devs cram in there, which also bring us back down. So if, if they were to make 360 games right now, you could probably do a 500 frames per second game at, at 720. Absolutely. So, All right, so what you want. But this is awesome. <laughs> if you think about the back compat, what are we missing right now? All the back compat games from Activision. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is very true. Very true. Uh, Bond also revealed that due to Diablo hitting Game Pass, Xbox has now become the number one platform for the game, beating PC. Beating PC. Yep. We are integrating the ABK titles into our services. We launched Diablo 4 into Game Pass, and Xbox has quickly become the number one platform for Diablo 4 players. Bond reiterated that some of the other games on the horizon for Xbox. We are integrating with Battle.net, all while launching Call of Duty Wars on mobile and preparing for the upcoming Hellblade 2, Avowed, and Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. So the power of Game game Pass right there, automatically turning Diablo 4 into the number one, uh, sorry, the Game Pass subscribers on Xbox on console, turning in, returning the dividends. Now, Diablo 4 is number one on Xbox. Take that, PC gamers. But how um, many? How many of those are on PC Game Pass, though? Uh, she says on uh, she says Xbox right here. Yeah, but she just says yeah. Game Pass and then Xbox becoming. So how many of the Game Pass ones are PC Game Pass? So if you do PC Game Pass and you launch Diablo Four, it opens up the uh, Battle.net launcher, and it makes you, it basically gives you. It basically links your accounts, so now you can download Diablo 4 from Battle.net. Does that make sense? Yes, but you would still be playing it through the Game Pass platform. Yeah, so like when I I, I did this with Star Wars Squadron, I played it on on Game Pass, on PC Game Pass, and what it did is it downloaded the uh, Origin launcher, I think is what it's called. Yes. And it just gave me permission to pull it. I linked the account. And it just gave me permission to download uh, that stuff. So that's how some of these PC launchers go. It just gives you the permission to download it on its native launcher, which is I, great I, for I, PC. I get that, but it still counts towards the Game Pass metric. But once Absolutely. you launch, once you launch it off the launcher, does it still count towards it? That that's, I'm sure it does because it has to register it, right? I mean, that's the point of having accounts is to register. You still have to be logged into your, <coughs> you know, your Game Pass account to be able to play it off that launcher. Yeah. You know, like if, so I feel like it's that's part of their metric that they're counting. Yeah. So when Again. I opened the Origin launcher without opening Game pa- opening Game Pass, one time it made me log in to Game Pass. So again, this is the whole uh, metrics thing with Excel. <laughs> Depending on how you look at it, mm-hmm. you launched it with the launcher. But yet you still had to log in. So which which one is it counting? Is it counting both? Is 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 each one is a, a different piece? Is it counting this one this way? This one this way? You know we don't know. And that's that's part of the thing that they know, but they could also manipulate the information and, to, to look good 
or and the battle.net that's now xbox anyways from the acquisition right so it is actually it is it so, is they're converting battle so regardless if you're using that launcher or not you're still using the xbox ecosystem that's if you're using the game pass ecosystem it hasn't con been converted yet. <coughs> it's still out there on yeah. its own they're still uh, game working pass on is, transition is xbox no matter if it's on console or pc i agree i agree with that statement holy fastback yeah, and shout out to Death Dealer. Thank you so much for joining us. You are the real MVP. She said, also, good morning, everybody. <laughs> good morning, Death Dealer. She says, hope you're feeling be feeling a butt better today, Axel. Uh, thank you. I'm feeling, uh, I'm, I'm going to say I'm feeling uh, yam, yams better. <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe, maybe I will ask him about that later, Death Dealer. Um, yeah, so... You know, it became this whole thing like, oh, Xbox Game Pass users on PC, PC Game Pass users don't unlock achievements because it doesn't launch through. There's no native Xbox uh, or Windows Store version of Diablo. And I don't think there needs to be. I really don't think there needs to be personally. Do the achievement systems need to be linked? I'm sure they can do that eventually through the use of their AI system. But I don't think they need to be. Um, and I, but I say that as I, I am not an achievement hunter. I have less than a hundred thousand achievements, and I've been with on Xbox for fifteen years, and I don't care. So I don't care. Uh, I'm not an achievement hunter. So yeah, but yeah, Xbox has quickly become the number one platform for Diablo four players. So that's gonna be Game Pass, PC Game Pass, Xbox Game Pass combined. Uh, there are more uh, Diablo 4 players now than Battle.net players. Pure Battle.net players. So that's cool, right? The So that tells them that they definitely have uh, a favorable service, a great service. Game Pass is successful. Um, and again, the backup hat, we already talked about that. That she is doing all of that. So... <clears throat> So, yeah, a great interview by president of Xbox, Sarah Bond, uh, who did a fantastic job, I think. Uh, well, it's not an interview. I guess it's email leaks, great email leaks from Xbox president, Sarah Bond. So, great email leaks brought to us. Hey, you know by, what? At least Sarah the Bond. email leak is more truthful than them just talking. So, yeah. think about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially if you don't think it's going to get out. I think that's uh, that's the best kind of email leak. And it, nothing but good news came out of this. We got confirmation that they're working on great new hardware. Confirmation that Back and Pat is going to stay essential to the brand, which is a great, great thing. Especially if you want to be more like PC, because once I buy something on, on Steam, it's there forever. I have it forever. And that's awesome. And that's, you know, games that I bought 25 years ago are still ex accessible on Steam. Unless they pull the license. Very, very rare from Steam. At least none of the games I've bought so far. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that back compatibility is fantastic. Uh, the new hardware is fantastic. And the fact that Game Pass has shown that, hey, you know what, Game Pass subscribers, I think this is great. It shows, it, I think it shows a great um, way that Call of Duty is going to come in. So Call of Duty is going to come in and people are going to subscribe to Game Pass to play Call of Duty instead of buying it outright on uh, Battle.net. So I think that's fantastic that more people are going to play Call of Duty on Game Pass probably than um, Battle.net or on rival other platforms. Uh, so Xbox is going to be the primary Call of Duty platform from here forward. So I think Diablo 4 just proved that. So yeah, it's going to be great. Xbox needs to let everybody know that Call of Duty is going to be available on Xbox Game Pass day one. And watch those subscriber numbers go up even further. Watch them. And then we're going to be in here be like, Xbox Game Pass has 50 million subs. You know? <laughs> so, that's yes. What when, that's what happened when they uh, got rid of gold and converted them to core. Well, they Game went Pass from core. like 20 to 36 or 33 or something yeah, like that. So they yeah. got to jump. <coughs> yeah, but I think jump. Call of Duty is going to drive subs through the roof, especially on PC. 
especially if it launches the way that that Diablo 4 launches. I think that's why they launched Diablo 4 by itself first to see if people would would be okay doing it that way, doing a linked account like the mm-hmm. EA um, Origin does it. Your EA Play stuff on PC does. So yes, fantastic. Um, nothing but great news for Xbox. No matter even if people write battle opinion pieces, even if it, Hellblade is only thirty frames, it is still fantastic news for Xbox all the way around. I think. So um, with that being said, I think that's all for our topics. Do you have anything else to add, Terry? No, this has been a long one. Yeah, three hours and thirty five minutes. Dread, you got anything else to say? Game on. Game on. All right. Go get your game on, guys. Again, thank you so much for watching the super long episode of the Iconic Video Games Podcast. There will not be an episode next week. Uh, I'm sorry, not the Iconic Video Games Podcast. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Good Morning Xbox. There will not be um, an episode next week as I will be traveling out of town. <clears throat> and so the next next week, we'll have another long episode. So hopefully Terry loves it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And how am I going to be traveling, Dreadpool? Like this. I'm driving <laughs> your ambulance around town. Oh, we're going to be going out of state. We're driving for a long time. <laughs> well, that's why we got the mountains in the background. <laughs> love it. Love it. Yeah. Again, don't forget to give the show a thumbs up. But guys, we wouldn't be able to do this show without you. Guys, their chat. And that's why you guys, their chat will always be the MVP to any of the shows here on the Iconic Video Games channel. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. I'm Axel1324. I'm Cool Cat Terry. And I'm Dreadpool. And we'll catch you guys next week. Bye, everybody.